Hello, you lot. How are you doing? Yes. I'm not in my studio. It's weird. Hello. It's Mag. It's Middle Age Gamer Guy, and it's Tuesday night, and we are live from somewhere in Scotland. Somewhere in Scotland. So there you go. Uh, now, I'm being kind of quiet because I'm in hotel rooms. I'm going to be screaming and shouting. So I'm being conscious because there's other people in other rooms. But welcome to a Tuesday Night Gaming Chat. We are about an hour outside of Glasgow and Edinburgh. That's where we are tonight. So there you go. Things are different. I don't like it. I don't like change. Um, so what I'm going to say is hello to everyone first before we do anything. Uh, firstly, Moonbeard was the first one here. Uh, he says, what do I win? I I, I don't know. Mate, you're going to have to get surprised, I guess. Gozo, good evening. How are you? Uh, Dan Game Tank, A up. Nice one. Uh, Manic, how are you doing? Good to see you. Danka, evening. Hello. Fearless, good evening. Great to see you. Matt, good evening. How are you? Uh, Dave Johnson, he's our community member of the month, says, you are all smell. So that's a lovely start to the evening, isn't it? Lovely. Uh, BS, as he says, he's community member of the month. Why you voted for him, I have no idea. But there you go. Uh, ben from uh, Bullion. Ahoy, how are you doing, buddy? Let's go. Um, Flame, good evening. I like this. Dave says, I'd like to make it known I'm only here to yell abuse at co-host Dave. I just want to see Dave's reaction to that <laughs> backstage. <laughs> he doesn't look too impressed. He's just like, I don't care. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, Bondi, good evening. Hello. How are you? Good to see you. Mahano. Hello, buddy. Uh, good to see you. Uh, guest from a few weeks back. Look at this legend. Look at you. You're the legend, mate. Uh, there you go. Is it a CD hotel? It's not a CD hotel. Quick, make sure all the Wi-Fi routers gaffer tape on it. I've, I hope so. Hopefully it works. Uh, I Quail, good evening. How are you? Moonchild, good evening. Hello, how are you? Uh, ben says, don't worry, Mark. I'm ready to take over the stream if need be. <laughs> uh, interesting to see if how the Dave Redemptions are going to do tonight. Dave and me have already planned some shit because they can't be loud, but we've, we've figured out some stuff, so don't worry. They're still going to happen. Uh, Gozo says, I'm good, thanks. You're in the hotel tonight. I am in the hotel. Got here about four o'clock and then quickly wrote the show because uh, I didn't get time yesterday. Uh, Fearless says, all I'm going to say is expect a lot of rain. And I mean a lot because it never fucking stops raining in Scotland. Well, I've witnessed that. It didn't stop raining from when I left Birmingham and it was rain all the way here. So there you go. Dave says, you are fools. Um, <laughs> where's your studio? Blink twice if you need help. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I do not need help. I'm not being kidnapped. Um, oh, is this what's going on when you can hear screaming through the walls in a hotel? Doesn't explain the banging noise. Well, it does because that's people like celebrating like me when we celebrate a shout out for Dave. That's what I thought it was anyway, when you hear banging on the walls in hotels. Poor me having to talk to Dave. Um, Bondi says, been better with the recent stuff that's gone on. Knocked the wind out of me. Totally understand that. We are going to talk about that said subject a little bit later on. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm going to say to people, there are going to be, as well as the, the usual laughs and japes that we normally have on this show, um, there are going to be a few serious things that we're going to announce tonight, which may um, be quite sad. Um, and that will be round about the halfway mark. But that is all I'm going to say for now. Um, ben says, Mag's Hotel can't be any worse than the Norbrek. Uh, no, the Norbrek is, is, is shit. Don't ever go there, ever. Um, if the, people don't know what the Norbrek is, it's the hotel attached to Play Expo. It's grim. It's very grim. Not Play Expo, but the hotel. Uh, Ems, good evening. How are you? Great to see you. What a lovely shade of bread. Isn't it? It's chocolate. Could almost, I was going to say lick that, but that just sounds wrong, doesn't it? There's no gaming chair to spin. No, there's no gaming chair, but we could we can make it happen. Uh, Becca, hello. How are you, lovely? Why are you at hotel? I almost said hospital. Um, I am currently in Scotland, and I'm working up in Scotland at the moment. Um, and I am got a shoot to to get this right. Uh, oh, I've just been raided. Have I just been raided? No, Jenny, Jenny, thank you for the tier one sub. Thank you so much for the tier one sub. Greatly appreciate that. Thank you so much. That's uh, 14 months now, nine months. Thank you. We get a shout out for Jenny. Thank you so much. Great to see you, Becca. Great to see you, Jenny. Uh, never been kicked into a bar before. I know it's weird, isn't it? I want to get people in there. That's weird. Um, so there you go. And she's actually spinning a chair. Why don't you spin a pillow? Sophie, good evening. How are you? Lovely to see you. Um, have I missed anyone? There's a lot of people just suddenly. Big Jesse, good evening. Hello. Hello, my friend. How are you? Um, 
how is the expo? I don't know. I'm not at Play Expo. That was last weekend, Manic. I didn't, I didn't go to that. What I'm doing is I'm working um, over this way and I've got to go to Edinburgh and then Stirling and then I'm staying around there and I'm doing Glasgow and then work, work somewhere else and then I bomb it all the way back Thursday night and I've got to be all the way down south in Chesham for another show. So it's absolutely nuts this week. Hence why tomorrow's stream is now going to be on Saturday night. So Dead by Daylight Community Night, Saturday night, okay? And the Silent Hill 2 remake stream will be the Saturday after. Chaos. I never stream Saturdays, but that's what's happening, just so you know. Hello to everyone that's here. Um, thank you so much. Um, I'm not throwing the TV out the window. That is not happening. No, that is not happening. Um, there you go. Uh, what else we got? Chaotic Neutral, good evening. How are you? It's wonderful beans. Finally getting a chance to see a stream. Good to see you, Chaotic. Lovely to see you. Uh, used to live near Chesham. Enjoy the chads. I will. I've been there before. It's one of those theatres that's so high class you even have to pay for the parking in the loading bay of the own theatre. So there you go. Um, throw the TV out the window, not out of it. Oh, TV at the window, not out of it. I I'll get it right. Uh, there's a weird placement of lamps, isn't it? I mean, there's a picture in the middle as well. If that helps. Who chose, chooses melty chocolate for a wall colour? I don't know. People in days in hotels. I bet people have licked that. They probably have. And I will probably join them later. Anyway, that picture isn't straight. It's probably my wonky head. But there you go. Anyway, enough about me and my weird hotel that I'm staying in tonight. Um, please welcome my co-host, who knows the most, He's the one, he's the only, he's Mr. David Jones. How you doing, mate? How you doing? I'm all right, mate. How are you? Not too bad. I was going to say your background you looks as uh, frilling as mine, as usually. I was, I was going to say, we're going for the nice sort of shade of bland tonight. Mm, that's it. That seems to be a thing. So there you go. Um, there you go. What What have you been up to, buddy? What have you been playing? Oh, well, I managed to finish off um, Astro, but as in I rolled the credits. Oh. But I haven't done that Grandmaster Challenge level at the end. Ah, I had okay. plenty of goes at it, but oh, fuck's sake. Absolutely. I think it, that is. I, I did, I did manage to get 40 plus goes for me. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know how many I've done, but I sort of got to the point where I got so far, I thought I was getting to the top, and then you sort of get to the top and it reveals like a whole other section still to go, loads to go. I thought, oh, bollocks. And immediately when I got to that bit, got hit by a fireball from enemy at the start again. I just thought, yeah, what, fuck it. <laughs> I'm, I'm moving on. I might come back to it at some point. But sorry, I've got all 300 bucks. I found all the puzzle pieces. You just need 301 now. I know. That one will forever annoy me if I don't go back and do it. it, it, Maybe it, it's at some point. it. I think it's worth doing it because mm -hmm. it's quite a cool little character. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to spoil it for people. It is a cool little character you'll lock. Until they have it. I'll try to get it Yeah. <laughs> I so it was starting to annoy me. So I thought, I'll have a, breath, a rest. I'll come back to it later. Yeah, so, yeah. but at least the main sort of finished the main part of that. But then after doing that, played a bit more of that um, walkabout mini golf VR game I told you about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's really good. And I was playing it in co op with a friend on Sunday. And that was actually, that was actually really good because whilst you're like a really basic avatar in the game, just like a head and then one hand with a golf club. It's a, it fully animates the mouth as both of you are talking. Mm. So when you're looking at your friend's avatar and he's chatting to you, the mouth's moving in time with the uh, the audio, which is pretty good. <laughs> really, really helps the immersion. And it's a cracking mm. game anyway. You single play, even even more yeah. fun in a multiplayer with a friend. Love that game. Yeah. And then the other thing I played, I won't talk about it much. We're going to look at it later. Is the Silent Hill Two remake. Mm. Uh, good couple of hours in, of that so far. Looking forward to that. And liking it. Good. Well, that's all we'll say about that because we are talking about Silent Hill too. But Becca wants to know what's your favourite biscuits. Ooh, I quite like some of the Lotus Biscoff biscuits. Those right. are quite nice. Well, I was going to say Bourbons. That's what was brought to mind when I saw my wall behind me. But there you go. <laughs> you got a um, anchorage for them, did you? Yeah, uh, but Jesse says you need a graphic designer to come in and promote how they can improve it with an overlay, don't we? <laughs> the blandness. Oh, yeah. yes. I'll do an overlay. I can give you good overlays and blah, blah, blah for your bourbon biscuit colored wall. Um, TKD, Adam, hello. How are you doing? Gilfly, hello. Um, Will, hello. How are you doing? He said, Will's just playing some Destiny. Are you having a good game? Dave says, boo, I say, Dave, boo. <laughs> Wallace and Gromit DLC, what's that? There is a Wallace and Gromit uh, course for the walkabout mini golf. Haven't got oh. it yet. 
but the, right, there's, okay. there's there's loads of DLC courses you can get in that game. Mm. I do want to get all of them because I really love the game. Yeah, I I, I play that for just that because I love Wallace and Gromit. Mm. Uh, I'm in a different local. Yes, I'm in a different local. I'm in a different country technically. Sophie says she can do good overlays. I don't. Yeah, I'm not going there. Um, Biscuit Wall Pose X. And she did do graphic designs, though. Sophie did do graphic designs. People didn't know. So she, that's probably what she means. My mind went straight to the gutter. Yes, I thought you did. See, my mind went straight to the gutter. Um, but there you go. Um, I make you a uh, good overlay five Dora, yes or no? <laughs> um, that sounds like a threat. I'll give you a good overlay, I will. Yeah, doesn't it? Um, Jenny says, we've been playing Spider-Man Miles Morales. Great game. Love that game. Love that one. Yeah. Am I in a different time zone? No, Scotland is not in a different time zone. I mean, some people might wish it is, but Scotland is not in a different time zone. So there you go. Anyway, um, I've I've not had a lot of time to play anything. I have been playing more Star Wars Outlaws, and I think I'm about more than halfway through now, I think. I've literally yeah. completed everything that was on Tatooine. Like, there's nothing left. Um, oh, all right. Yeah. And I even played that pre-order mission that everyone kicked up a fuss about the Jabba one. Yeah, it was um, really, was it? It was all right. Not, not worth not worth making a fuss about at the end of the day. Kind of showed off some extra characters that you would recognise from Return of the Jedi and that's about it. So it wasn't wasn't worth that. I mean I'm glad I didn't pay for the pre order. I'd be pissed if it was that. Uh Scotland is in a different year zone. <laughs> Scotland is in a different time period. Time period. Boom. Said the same thing, you two. Um there you stick to your head out the room door and yell something not, not being independent. No, I'm not doing that. It's on a different planet. There you go. Should we get our guest in before this all gets weird about being in a chocolate colour room in Scotland? I think so, we should. We need to change yeah. the narrative, don't we? Yeah, let, let's 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 get our guest in. He says, no, don't do that. No, no, people are saying no, don't. <laughs> right, so this gentleman, it's his first time on the show. I had the pleasure of meeting him um, quite some time back. And actually, it's quite fitting that I am wearing my debug top, because he put a tweet out last night, um, which I thought was really good, saying that one of his first events that he was invited to was the debug uh, you and debug Indie Awards, which took place in February. And literally, me and our wonderful guest tonight have been at pretty much nearly all the same events this year. Not all of them, but I'd say the majority of you were at WASD and um, we've been at the uh, creator meets and then there's probably someone forgetting about there's loads of there's tons it'll probably tell me a ton of them that we were a uh, format obviously which only took place the other week um but he, he's he's he started his, his uh creator journey and it's brilliant to see how he's flourishing and stuff and he's very much well liked in the community please do give it up for the legendary and i'm not just saying that legendary jl how you doing buddy hey uh, i'm doing really well thanks how are you doing yeah, yeah good to see you mate yeah great to see you yeah, you first too, time on the show. Um, <laughs> and yeah, we, it is literally like, Dave, stop booing everyone. You just, he's supposed to be community member of the month. He's a friendly source, isn't he? Yeah. He, it's, it's like, yeah, boo yourself. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, hi, Dave. Yes. Yes. Uh, TK and say, Joe, what a menace. He is a menace, isn't he? Um, oh, there you go. Becca says, first question before we even get, we'll get before we get to the hardcore stuff. What are your favourite bris- biscuits, says Becky? Um, it's a bit of a tie tie, but it's either bourbon biscuit or custard cream. Nice. Or maybe the ginger snaps, who knows? But, you know, and anything that's sweet, you know, and sugary, that's what matters the most. That sounds good to me. Um, Dan Game Tank says, CM community member of the month. The first C doesn't mean community anymore. <laughs> Well, that just summed up, Dave. Um, Sophie says, I like bourbons or Oreos because I sometimes act like one. Hmm. I've got to think about that. <laughs> um, Dave says he's not wrong. There you go. Um, so for those who don't know, uh, links have just gone in chat. Thank you very much, Dan. <laughs> he's confused Becca as well. I was like, yeah. And yeah, just in case you didn't get the joke earlier. <clears throat> yes. Um, <laughs> d- oh, Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Um, for those who don't know, <laughs> those who don't know, and this, this show is just going to go to shit tonight. I can see this. Oh, God. Oh, God, no, Will. No. 
just this has just gone into filth. It's just turned into filth. For those who don't know, let's get this back on track, people. People who don't know JL, tell us about what you do and what you stream, and tell us about what you. Everything well, I'm know. I'm listening to JL. I'm a part-time content creator for Ice Streamer from the UK, covering the range of the games, including action, story, and adventure, and the titles plus more. The aim of the game is simple around it. I want to tell every single genre of music, whether it's from a big developer, a small developer, my full 100% effort, because I believe every single title deserves a spotlight in the actual um, industry that I live in. I also own the theme park, my community, where it's for the like-minded people, just combining gaming and with experience factors, just trying to find a place where everyone feels, you know, fits in, in a you know, very unique world that we live in. And uh, that's why, for me, I've loved theme parks, and I call them attractions in my stream. And that's why... You know, the public eye combined and say IRL rides with like the game. I thought, hey, yeah. well, why not make the theme rock from it? It's unique. No one's done it before. So there I am. And I've been, I've been doing it for about since October of last year, properly flat out. And I'm, I'm living the dream. I'm just, you know, enjoying the ride. And that's how life really should be like in cards with Contigration. Mate, I tell you what, because I've seen you some all over the place. I know when Twitch comes on, you were in the same country as me, but you were at like a massive festival. Yeah, was I was at um, some hardstyle festival with Defcon 1. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it was it was manic to say the least. But um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to try and get to like even when the Twitch cons next year and stuff with that. Because yeah. I do I do love my music as well as heart as well yeah. as my gaming. So two of the main factors that I love. Yeah. Dave just said, "Bloody LJL or more well rehearsed." Unlike Mag, who's unprofessional. <laughs> so you said that that spill was spot on. That's spot on. <laughs> What 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 you've been playing recently? Tell us what you've been playing recently. Um, I've been playing mainly Hotel Architect on the um, playtest weekend that went out last weekend. I've also been diving into yep. The Witcher Three that I've done about ten hours into. That was really once been my main game. Um, aside from that, um, I really want to get back to the Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga for the Xbox. Um, and that's about it, really. Like, there's been a few indie games we're playing on stream here and there, but it's just like when you know when you're in like kind of rut where like you don't even know what to play. Then you're like, boom! I want to main this game for X amount of months now, you know. And like, you know, I've, that's what I've been at the minute. So it's mainly been Lego, uh, Hotel Architect, and The Witcher Three mainly. Okay. Um, Sophie just said there's a weird feedback when JL speaks. Is anyone else getting that? Because I am not hearing that. Dave, are you hearing that? I didn't notice, but I listened out for us. Okay, I wonder if it's my mic. I might move my mic away. I wonder if it's my mic picking it up. Yes, okay. We will sort that. Hang on, let me just check. We should have echo cancellation on. If we've not, we have got it on, so I don't know why there's an echo. So my apologies. There is a minor okay. echo. I'll move the mic away. It might be my fault. Let's blame the truth. We'll blame you. <laughs> blame me. It's not it's not JL because if it was JL, I'd hear it from JL over and It's when Dave speaks to it's your end. Yeah, it's my end. Okay, it's gone now. I've literally moved the mic away. The mic was too close to the speaker. So there you go. Yeah. My apologies, people. You know, I'm using budget budget equipment now tonight. There you go. So, folks, if you're not already following JL, um, Dan, if you'd be so kind, drop all the links in there. You can basically follow him literally on everything. Uh, Moonbed says my end is always an issue. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> uh, there's his Twitch, his X, his YouTube, uh, his TikTok. He's also on Insta if you want to check him out. Uh, I've tagged him on Insta as well. Uh, and uh, go check out his channel. Um, shall we crack on with the show? Because we've got quite a lot to get on with. Yeah, I'm ready. Should, mate. All right, Becca says what next? Twitter. Do you know what's the first time I've actually called it X? I've realised that. I always call it Twitter. It's a funky name for Twitter, but I still call it Twitter. Call it Twitter. Everyone else does. Yeah, there you go. Woo, let's go. Right, here we go then. So, folks, um, this is our 187th show. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got eight new games, including the uh, new DLC for Starfield, Chat Space. We've got the Until Dawn remaster, perfect for Halloween. Uh, we've got the Diablo 4 DLC, Vessel of Hatred, and also a game that Dave's been playing, uh, and I'll be playing next week. We've got the Silent Hill 2 remake. So um, I, I called it X recently. And my friend Def stared me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Uh, and I started the votes that got you there. So shut the fuck up, says Ben. This is to do with Dave because he said, stop blaming me, you twats. I'm community <laughs> member of the year. Are they a year? Get fucked. Month. Not year. Christ, after the way you'll be able, no one will vote you for the year. I'm going to say that now. Anyway, let's crack on with our first game tonight. Um, this came out actually Monday last week, 
but we were waiting for the reviews to drop. And actually, the reviews took a couple of days to come through. Um, this uh, is out on Xbox Series X and S and PC. And this is Starfield Shattered Space. Here comes the trailer. In the beginning, the great serpent wrapped its tail around the whole universe. He watched over our families, guided us through tough times, and said one day he'd send a promised one to answer our prayers, to give us all the worlds of the settled systems. It's just a matter of time. serve the great serpent. Play it on Xbox. So you go folks. This um, obviously, it's just been over a year now since Starfield was out. Um, and as we know, didn't exactly set the world alight or become getting any game of the year list, but certainly wasn't a bad game. Uh, <laughs> Moonbeer says, play it on Xbox. So it should be. Um, and this is the first DLC that's come out, and it's a free DLC. Um, and obviously, when we saw the trailers earlier in the year, we were like, is Starfield going down the horror route? And that's the question. What What is this day? Because everyone's a little bit confused as to what this DLC actually is. Yeah, I wouldn't call it a horror, but yeah, it's going for a bit of a sort of different sort of vibe. I think with this this DLC, it's not free DLC. It is um, you, know, you have got to buy it. If, if oh, you, it? If you, you I thought it was free. If you brought so. like the premium edition at launch, then it was included in there. But if you just bought the standard edition at launch, then you've got to buy this as a separate purchase. Ah, I didn't realise that. Not, okay. not fully free, I'm afraid. Oh, that's um, a shame. But yeah, with this one, this this is focused on um, House Faroon, who you heard a lot about in like the main storyline, mm -hmm. the, um, yeah. the main campaign of the game. One of your um, followers was from House Faroon as well. So she she's got a link you know, back to that planet. But it was somewhere that you could never actually visit you know, in the main game. Right. There was no you know, route to get to their home planet. I think no one knew where it was. But in this game, you kind of like get taken there. You uh, you start off by finding like a mysterious space station. Once you've uh, figured out what's going on in the space station, it then just transports you to the uh, the Varun homeworld, where you're then going to find out what's been going on there because uh, it was like some sort of experiment they were trying to do has gone completely awry. You're the only one that can talk to the uh, the main speaker of House Varun. Right, and you've okay. got to like, follow his instructions, try and solve the mystery, figure out what they've uh, done and try and set it right. It look, looks like it should be, you know, all right. If you if you liked Starfield and you enjoyed it, this is more of that. Okay. And I think this DLC is as big as some like previous ones Bethesda have done for other games. Hmm. And it, so a lot of people are saying it's not as good as some of the other DLCs as well. It's just meant to be, you know, it's an okay storyline, hmm. a couple of ch choices to it, but otherwise it's, you know, it's just more Starfield. Yeah. As I say, it depends how much you really like that. I, mean, I, I played quite a bit of it, but I got to the point where it all felt quite repetitive and... You know, not that exciting and yeah this, this DLC really is just one new planet with one 
you know, main city to it that they've really put a lot of work into. The rest of the planet, mm. I think, is the same as the base game. You know, if you the same points of interest keep popping up here and there. Right. If you to like go and do more stuff, but yeah, it's just more Starfield. So I can't, I can't say it's going to you know, convince me to go and get it. There's there's better stuff out. I think Star, Starfield for me had its day last year. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it's funny because. It didn't really grab me, as everyone knows. I wasn't that interested. I tried it. I didn't like it. And then I, because I thought this was free DLC, I was thinking, well, this looks more interesting. The Fury's just posted in the thing that it's nearly 30 quid to buy this. Mm, which is quite a lot. Like, it's not as big as the DLCs. Yeah, mm. it's a lot, isn't it? I mean, 10, 15, probably 10, so let's be fair. 15 probably, probably still be a bit much. 10, you'd probably think, mm. yeah, why not? 30 quid. Nah, I, that I mean, that's again. that's near enough to your price of a full game, isn't it, nowadays? Because you oh, know, yeah. you're rounding up to the nearest like 10, it's like 50 quid almost. So it's like they're trying to milk it in, you know, Bev's the skint in the pocket and stuff. Yeah. Did, what, what, did you ever play Starfield, JL? Yeah, I, I, I play quite a lot of it on the Xbox because I, even though I've got an Xbox One console, the large generation, I played it through the cloud service. Right. And okay. I played that for like a few months and stuff, but it's just got a bit time consuming because you've got to go from one planet to the other. There was no land vehicles at the time when I was playing it, so you had to do like human walking. Uh, and then yeah. when you had to go for the factions and stuff, you had to like have your actual ammo there and then, otherwise you got absolutely bodied. <laughs> and it, it, it just felt like that, you know, it it just felt like a base game where people were just testing the waters for. And you know, I saw in the Reddit and stuff that everyone's all just doing put many, many hours into it. But in my honest opinion, like you know, I, I wouldn't mind playing it, but it's not really at the top of the list. You know, I played it, I played it as it was. Um, you know, I gave it a try, it just to get on the hype train, it's a kind of deal. But ideally, yeah. it's just you know, Beth is just trying to you know make their own almost in the gaming scene again. But uh, they're just failing with this whole expansion, to be honest, really. Yeah. I don't think this is really setting the world alight, is it? I, it's one of those. Um, all right, folks, for those who've not seen the show, good evening, Ryan, by the way. How you doing? Good to see you. Uh, those we don't actually basically review the games as it were. Oh, Amy, hello. It's Amy. How are you doing? Good to see hey, you. Amy. Yeah, good to see you at format as well. Um, and um, we don't actually review the games themselves. We basically take the average scores from the internet and turn them into something. And basically, you've got to guess what the scores are. Now, people already start with score, scores. If you get it correct, you get a shout out. If you you know, that's what we're going to do. And also Dave and our guest, JL, are going to have a guest. Now, I'm going to go through some of the scores we've had already. Ben said this was a 7.5 to start with, but that was before. But then he changed his mind, said that he thinks this is a 6.5. Moonbeard says a 5.5. Danka says, I've heard from various podcasts, this was quite meddling. So going back a 6.5. Godman says a 6.5. Um, let's keep on running down the things. Iquil says a 6.5. Moonshild, 6.5. Uh, Dave says, I rate Maxi's Hotel Wall a chocolate hobnob out of him. Well, that's brilliant. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Um, I will be licking those walls later. Uh, hey, I hope everyone's good. You're doing well. Thank you, Amy. Lovely to see you. Um, Jenny is, says a seven. Flame says a six. Um, Starfield be a thing once the PS5 version drops. Don't know, will it? I don't think it will. Um, Matt says a solid seven. M says a seven. Uh, so nice to catch up with you guys at Format. Certainly, well, Format was amazing. That's such a good time over the three days. I was exhausted afterwards. 7.5 from Fury. Uh, I get. I gave seven. We wrote Dave Johnson, status community member, out of 10. <laughs> Dave, Dave, what do you reckon this got? I'm going to go for a 6.5. 6.5. JL? 6.5. 6.5 as well. Okay, folks, this is your last chance. Uh, Ryan says, I've got nothing to base the scores on because you didn't see the trailer. We'll show the trailer in a bit. I said, I rate this is six and a half booze out of Dave out of 10. This is your last chance, folks. This is Starfield Shattered Space, the new DLC for Starfield, which came out Monday last week on the 30th on Xbox Series X, S, and PC. And I can tell you, this got a very okay six out of 10. Hmm. It was getting worse scores, but the scores seem to have slowly crept up over the course of the week. So the reviews have got slightly better. But there. Uh, um, so anyone who said six, there you go. So it's good if you like Starfield. If you don't, I probably wouldn't bother trying it. So there you go. 
So here we go. Um, congratulations to everyone who got it right. Um, did JL get his bucket? No, he's not had a bucket yet. We'll get him a bucket. We'll get one of those. Yeah. Uh, where is JL's bucket? No bucket, no stream. Too late. We've already started with 33 minutes. <laughs> Tough luck. Uh, Penn says 0 0.5 out as usual. You were close, mate. You were close. But uh, if anyone said guess six, you guessed correctly. Let's move on to our next game. Uh, something completely different. I actually saw someone playing this on stream uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this also came out on Monday the 30th, but this is only on PC at the moment. Uh, this is a pi new pirate adventure game called Rogue Waters. Let's have a look at the trailer for this. Lend an ear to this tale of treachery. Set sail for vengeance. Face the unknown. Navigate savage waters and choose your battles wisely. Gather your crew and ready yourselves to board the enemy vessel. Weaken the enemy by choosing your targets wisely. With every attack, enemies retreat, and you can use that to your advantage. Push into an obstacle. Outmaneuver. Push one enemy into another. Make them dance like you play. Tame the legendary beasts to fight alongside you in battle. Are you ready to settle the score? <laughs> so there you go, folks. That is Rogue Waters, which came out last week on PC. I actually saw a Sea of Thieves streamer uh, playing this. You see, it's also a Twitch partner, Captain Falcor, and he was loving it. He was loving it. I don't know whether he was sponsored by it or not, but he seemed to be loving it. Um, a couple of people already started dropping... Um, which phones is this coming out on? It's not. It's on PC. I like your smug thing there. Um, Dag said, this actually looks good. 8.5. Gozo has also gone for 8.5. Uh, Atomic Moonshine says 5.5. She's not keen on it. Reminds me of uh, RuneScape ports, but you actually see what happens on the missions you send out. 7.5. People already getting the scores in. Uh, ben says 8. Moonbeard says 7. Amy said, mm, maybe it's an 8. Uh, Flame says a 7.5. M says 7. Gilfly says six. Well, hold those scores because you might change. Dave, tell us what this game is all about. Yes, this is a, uh, a roguelike pirate adventure. So you're playing as a as a pirate captain who's on a, a quest to solve this uh, this prophecy and face off against an immortal captain. We're going to try and defraud him and uh, you know take all his uh, his treasure. But the structure with this one is it's um, this is a roguelike. You've got like a you know a hub where you, where you and your crew and your ship exists, and then you go out on like procedurally generated runs, like you'll go, you know, sail, sail out and it'll you know, generate, you know, different ships for you to board, different ports for you to attack. You know, there'll be different like crew members you can recruit on the runs as well. After each successful run, you go back to your, your, your hub area, fix up your ship, you know, heal up any crew that got injured, uh, you know, and upgrade yourself because whilst your equipment and stuff resets between each run you go out on, there's, all, there's still stuff that um, you can upgrade, like you can upgrade your skills, and your crew skills and you use them on the next run to make it a little bit easier and so it's got a bit of a story you know that goes through it you know i think there's about three acts to it number of runs you do to progress each act through the storyline it looks um yeah, pretty decent i mean graphics wise it's not going to set the world alight but it looks yeah. decent enough i'd say for a yeah. pirate adventure it looks uh more fun to me than was it skull and bones that ubisoft did yeah. which really mm -hmm. wasn't much this looks like you know more of a you know, a pirate adventure than that ever was. It's actually got shipboarding for starters. Swing onto the ship, take out the crew. Looks pretty cool. Mm. I quite like the look of it. Okay. Um, well, Jenny says she reckons this has got a 6.5. Adam started with a 6 and then switched to a 6.5. Uh, Dave Johnson also says 6.5. Uh, Ryan says, does it have pay-to-win elements? Do we know? No, I don't believe so. There you go. Okay. Then it's not a mobile game. Happy days. Skull and Mate at Bones was amazing. Hashtag Ubisoft partner. <laughs> Hashtag Ubisoft partner. I think you're a Ubisoft partner, aren't you, JL? No, I, I applied for it, I think, uh, about a month or two ago. I got it declined. But, you know, ne nevertheless, I'll probably reapply later on. Dude, you'll get it. Don't worry. You'll get it. All I was going to say was, I wasn't going to speak for you, but I was going to say, Ubisoft partner, didn't like it. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm, I'm going to be honest, and I've spent many a time slagging Ubisoft off on this show. Um, so, yeah, that's what's wrong with the world. Um, JL needs to have a Ubisoft partner, yet you've got this guy here slagging them off and these Ubisoft partners. <laughs> um, if Mac can get it, anyone can. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there you go. That's true. You'll get it, dude. Don't worry. Yeah. They're not picky, are they? Yeah, he goes, oh, in which case, uh, Skull and Bows were shit. Hashtag JL for the win. Hashtag JL has great initials. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Fury says a seven. Iquel said seven. Manic said a seven. Um, uh, Ubisoft or EG EGX, which is worse? I'll tell you after I've been to EGX. Oh, I've seen that. I've seen the floor plan for EGX now. Is there anything there? It's a quarter of the size of what it was last year. The left room for the tumbleweeds to roll along. Yeah, it's a, a quarter. quarter. A quarter oh. of the size. And the rest of it is the Comic Con. So the Comic Con has taken up three quarters. Oh um, so Comic Con has taken up the whole of the other side, and the other big chunk of it. Uh, I liked TGX when it was in the EC. So did I. Even back in the days at Earl's Court. Um, oh, don't ask me that, Amy. It used to be good. I've got a feeling. I've got a feeling it's going to be terrible this year because they've merged it with the Comic Con and they're charging way more than they normally did for tickets and they're doing a day less they're basically charging 20 quid more for a weekend ticket but they're doing one day less and the show's only a quarter of the size of what it normally is but i am going i've been sent tickets and i will give it a fair shout because i have heard even though ubisoft have pulled out of the event and um, platonica there and i've got a load of games and bandai namco are there and they're going to be showcasing little nightmares free which i'm really excited for um mm. And there's a couple of games, one that we're talking about tonight and a couple of other games we'll be talking about in future shows that are out round about the time of the show. Um, so it might be okay, <laughs> but we'll leave it at that. Um, JL, back to this game. I don't want to go on another EGX rant, but Amy, DM me and I'll, I'll tell you my thoughts on EGX. <laughs> It'll probably be like a 14-page essay, so my apologies in advance. Um, what do you think of this, this pirate game? Are you into pirate games and strategy games? Would this be your kind of thing? I've, um, I used to play a lot of Sea of Thieves and stuff on the next Xbox and stuff. Um, I've not really played a Skull and Bowls game, a Bones game, but um, yeah, it seems to be good with the um, turn RPG kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's, you know, it's different because normally it's more like medieval kind of like roguelike, these turn-based strategy games, but it's good to see pirates on there just doing different like... Um, how to kill enemies and stuff and as they said you know apps and stuff for quest for progressing the story i like that kind of element for it and yeah it seems to be like a cool you know you know average community around it but we'll, we'll just see how it holds up really with this uh you know day release and stuff on their pc mm -hmm. releases i think this could be good i i think this is right up my i mean i like pirate related games anyway but i think this is this would be good I mean, I, i'll give it a go i'll give it a go um Chaotic Neutral and uh, One Handy Gamer. Hello. Hello. I saw hello to Chaotic Neutral earlier. Um, welcome on in. Uh, and uh, One Handy Gamer, great to see you. And Amy said, can't be better than Timeless and Format. That's very kind of you to say. So let's go. Also, don't forget, because we are going to say this. Um, if you don't know, I also am um, one third of the people that organised the Manchester Twitch meets. And that has gone live. And it is December the 6th at RK Club. And we've got lots of Christmas festivities for you. Um, if you want details, let me know. Um, and uh, it will be going live on the 6th, Friday the 6th of December in Manchester. So there you go. There you go. Uh, details. If someone can drop that, that in the chat for people. Um, but there you go. Uh, Icon says, but can you play the game as a ball? That's the real question. Because obviously Ben from uh, Ben from uh, Bullion is here. Well, let's see. Let's see. What do we reckon this got? Uh, we've had lots of scores. JL, what do you reckon this has got? Probably a, a seven. A seven. Okay, Dave. I'm going to try an eight for this one. An eight. Okay. Folks, this is your last chance. Get your scores in the chat. You could get a shout out for your channel. This is Rogue Waters, which came out on the 30th of September on PC. And if there are no more guesses, One Handy Gamer says six pounds. Also, Danka, thank you so much for the one pound donation to Everyone Can. We are raising money for Everyone Can. We'll be talking about that later on. That was our charity at Timeless. Thank you so much. Ever closer to that goal. Um, I can tell you this did exceptionally well. I've got an average of 
close. 8.5 out of 10. Wow, interesting. Nice. So this got really good reviews. Really good reviews. So there you go. Some cracking reviews there. So people are like, wow. I think that's just shot them. Yeah, no way. Yeah, don't, yes way. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Fuck off. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah, so people are shocked. And he's like, Slay, don't ever get me to do a... I, I can't, no. <laughs> I, I, I do not pull off the sleigh, but there you go. Um, so there you go. Uh, congratulations to everyone who got it right. Someone got bribed. I don't know. <laughs> I, saw, I saw someone play this, and I thought it actually looked all right. So I, I don't know. I, yeah, well, I saw it look good as well. Yeah, yeah. I think it looks good, but there you go. Right. Banker says, I can see why. There you go. Um, to the Sega. Sega. Yeah, I that. Uh, not on this show. Uh Dave says, yeah, fuck <laughs> off, Mag. Not because of the scores, just a general fuck off. Thank you, Dave. I've got a lot. I love my manager. Um, moving on to some news. We'll have some more games coming up for you. So, obviously, last week we talked about the fact that the, the 30th anniversary edition of the PS5 sold out within seconds, right? However, if you were in Japan, you stood a better chance of actually getting one of the consoles, even though they're very limited, because in Japan, they came up with a better way to stop scalpers buying them. And they did this by two things. You could, well, three things, actually. You had to buy it through the Japanese Sony website. And you had to have a PSN account, which is registered in Japan. So if you were outside of Japan, you weren't going to get a console. And then it will check your account and see if you have more than 30 hours of game time logged on either a PS4 or PS5 between 2014 and 2024. And if you did, I mean, that's easy, 30 hours, that's like a week for me, right? Or Dave, that's about like, that's a day for Dave. Um, but it then checks that you're not a bot. Um, now, what's interesting is this actually worked really well because it could tell who were actual account holders and who were bots, and it stopped scalpers buying up. Because obviously we heard in America and in Europe, they're going for like ridiculous amounts of money, like $5,000 and stuff. It's absolutely nuts. And the problem is they've not been able to stop it in America because technically bots are not banned. They're not illegal. They are for tickets for live events, but not for buying items. And that's why so many items get scalped up and it's been it's been estimated that um going back to 2020 when playstations and xboxes came out more than 15 percent of the sales when the initial allocation came out were scalpers so more than 15 percent across the world right and they reckoned that just that 15 percent made more than 432 million pounds in profit jesus Oh, it's sad, isn't it? Because you hear that and you can understand why they keep doing it. Because Yeah, yeah, yeah because they're making really, an absolute yeah. killing. Why not? That's mental. Absolute killing. So the question is, um, well, it's just, oh, Skull and Bones, hang on. Good evening all. Hello, Ellie. How are you doing? Good to see you. Uh, Skull and Bones was good in the first season, then it died, and I'm gutted. It could have been something good. There you go. At least there's someone who enjoyed it. Lottery system, they do know how to do limited giveaways. Those legendary 30-hour days, I know, exactly. Uh, slightly punishing if you never owe a PSN customer. Yes, but really, if you've been on PlayStation, you must have bought something sometime in the last 10 years, I would have thought. Um, for the donate. Oh, awesome. Thank you for doing the shout out. Appreciate that. Um, Grand Designs on 4. Hello. How are you? Good to see you. Um, greatly appreciate that. Um, so what I'm going to say is, I know that they can't do anything about it in America, but do you think there are ways that in England and Europe things could be implemented to stop these scalpers? Because if Japan can do this, why can't other countries? Well, I don't think there's any reason why other ones couldn't do it, even if bots aren't banned in America. You know, isn't it? the stop companies you know, doing stuff to similar stuff to stop them anyway, because Valve did similar actually with the, um, the Steam Deck. You, know, you, had yeah. to, you had to have an existing um, you know, Steam account, and you had to have you know, a number of hours on it. I, th I don't think it was you know, 30 hours, but like a couple of hours, but, you know, enough to just you know, you know fool the bots, really. Yeah. Because, you know, a bot account would just be brand new. You know, it wouldn't have anything on it at all. 
So that, that just helps. Yeah. It's some, some of it still gets scalped. Because some of the people who've got like, say, 30 hours on a PlayStation cat might still be a scalper. I might think, well, yeah, flog, mm. flog this console for five grand. Why the hell not? So yeah, yeah it, it can help to a degree. It'd be nice to see like other you know, companies do the same when like some of their new stuff comes out. Because yeah, mm. we saw the same with um, in video graphics cards during the uh, the early days of the pandemic. They mm-hmm. got scouts about the regular. Yeah, that was a pain in the neck. And it, when all the consoles came out, especially the PS5, when it came out, that one was a nightmare, as you say. <laughs> so I would like to see some of the other countries do more in like you know mm-hmm. other countries, you know, not just in Japan. If you can do it in Japan. Why can you not yeah. do it elsewhere? I don't really see yeah. a reason why you couldn't. I know. Um, any thoughts, JL? Um, I do feel like the, the main factor of stuff why, you know, it's not really stopped is probably because of like social media, like Facebook, when they have the marketplace thing. Because I believe you get so many people out there get like, you know, they're just asked for the actually additional like, you know, physical copy. Then they get people like making a dude lovely kind of price on the actual marketplace. But then Facebook turns a blind eye and turns out, oh, there's a scalper and stuff, send them the PS5, that's limited edition. And like, you know, we got someone that's, you know, you got like little little Jimmy there that's once like the big PS5, where you got Terry who's like 40 years old hocking it and stuff, kind of deal. You know, <laughs> there's, 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 just no, there's just no need for it. And like, like if companies are wanting to go down the route of like, you know, to stop any scalpers, social media is the main uh, factor of it. And, you know, that goes closer forward, for example, Steam, if they like go on board with, you know, what's going on with that. Because they need to put those precautions in place and stuff to make sure these scalpers, you know, don't you know get away with it. Because I've seen this happen far too often, you know, in the whole um, getting consoles or even like games secondhand and stuff, and just you know, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see. Uh, you bump your mic. That echo is back. Oh, did I knock it? There you go. I'll move that out of the way. I'll move that out of the way. Or I might just mute my mic when people are talking. We'll see. I'm in a hotel in Scotland. It's chaos. What can I say? Um, let's move on to some more games. I want to say hello to a couple of people. Also, Grand Designs on 4, thank you very much for that resub. Greatly appreciate that. Uh, that is two months now, three months in total. Also, um, Darth, hello. Great to see you. Good to see you. And Games Guru, hello. Good evening. Great to see both of you. Good to see you. Um, we'll, and also, we'll be talking about that later. So we won't spoil, spoil that. Shh, keep it, keep it, keep it a secret, chaotic. <laughs> Let's move on to our next game. Now, I believe this is free to play. I think. Yes. I, I knew I got one right somewhere. Um, this came out last Tuesday. This is on PlayStation Five, Xbox Series X and S, and PC. And this is called Throne and Liberty. Let's have a look at our third game of this evening. The throne, irresistible to those who seek supreme power. Once held by my noble king, only to fall, like so many others, into the fires of betrayal. But from the ashes of legends, rises the hope of those to come. Forging new bonds, and finding new strength. We formed a great resistance by uniting the strongest guilds to avenge our fallen king. And like the fearless fighters today, we march with our hero to reclaim Silesia and rebuild liberty anew. To join the battle, how will you claim your throne? There you go. That is Throne and Liberty. I just want to say hello to Professor Stork, who I know is lurking. I think she was on her way back from the gaming convention that she went to. I hope you had an amazing time. Uh, I want to hear all about it. So drop me a line. I hope you had an amazing time. Sorry I didn't catch your stream from it. I'll have to watch it on catch-up. Um, but yeah, it was our amazing guest on last week's show. Um, 
So tell us a little bit more about this one while I show some scores in chat, Dave. Yes, this is a, a free to play uh, MMORPG. I think it's originally in uh, Southeast Asia, but it's been brought over by Amazon. Ah, so they, yeah. they've, they've helped bring it over, get it uh, you know, sorted out for, for Western audiences to join in. But it, it is that you know, massive online game. You, know, you, you go and create a character, and you're going to have to, you know, you're probably expected to play for like hundreds of hours, really, grind away mm. quite a lot. Um, I think there is cosmetics that you can buy in it as well so it has got some sort of cash shop to it right, don't think okay. there's any battle passes or anything like that currently but there is a you know a cosmetic shop if you want to uh, buy some stuff because well it's free to play they've got to fund it somehow to keep it going um but from what i've seen of it i think graphically it looks really nice because some of these games hmm. don't always look that great you know, yeah this, this one i think does look pretty good um but it's, it's not my type of game just because of the sheer amount of time that it really wants you to put into it you know as i say it wants you to yeah Get in there, you know, join up with friends, go out and take uh, take out the enemies that spawn in the world, go into like all the uh, various missions and dungeons and stuff that pop up, hang mm -hmm. around for the end game, carry on doing all this stuff, carry on upgrading all your equipment and stuff, make it as best as you can. Uh, you know, I haven't got the time for that sort of game yeah. at all. I know some people do, some people just love getting into the grind, don't they? They can just yeah. do it, mm -hmm. they, might, they might watch something else at the same time while they do do that. Not, not for me, <laughs> I'm afraid, not my type. What was that? Well, what was that? Probably enjoy it. This reminds me very much of um oh god, what was that other one that was on Xbox Game Pass for ages has come off? That's very similar. Oh, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but yeah, oh there's my quite god. a few similar and ones like this. Someone was talking about it to me on Friday. I knew exactly what because I, I I'd streamed it a couple of times and for the life of me, mm -hmm. and it's just a big MMORPG, and now it's on PlayStation Plus, but it's not honestly I think it's like Black Desert, are you? Is that the one you're thinking? Spat about? Desert Online. Yes, yeah, exactly that. Yeah, exactly that. It just it gives me those vibes. And I, I quite yeah. like those games, but it does suck up a lot of time. Um, oh, no, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, lots of scores. We've got sevens, eights, seven point fives. Those going here. JL, what are, you, what are your thoughts on this? Do you, do you like a good uh, MMORPG? Yeah, I don't mind a good MMO RPG. It's just that, like, if it's a massive grind, like, uh, for me as a game, I more have, like, objectives or sub objectives to get towards, like, the main goal and stuff, a lot per area. And if you're just, like, sat basing, like, a, a game, you create your cover and, do, and stuff, you get basing the game, and, like, okay, all right, figure stuff out yourself. It's like, you're like, right, where do I start? And, you know... I'm um, I'm concerned that this will fall down the new world, uh, new world route or lost ark route, where you yeah. know what will happen is you know regards to Amazon, they brought a new world and stuff, and they plonked it on like the uh, database and stuff. They few few years it fell off, and they're trying to revive back to life, same as lost ark and stuff like that. And I've got um, I wish for the best of them, but like if, especially if it's free to play, knowing full well it's free to play but there's a load of like you know if there's battle passes there will be uh cosmetics and stuff here and down the line and yeah um we'll see how it is but mm. not really been keen much of like an rpg person myself but it seems to be good i've seen a lot of my friends play it online and stuff and it seems to be pretty cool if i had the time i'd try it is what i'd say but i think it's the same thing as, as you said uh, even um was it fury mentioned this uh like new world's new thing didn't do the launch as well as it looks i haven't got the time but if i had i probably would give this a go it's one of those mm. folks get your scores in if you haven't already done loads of people got your scores in um jl i'll start with you this time what do you reckon this got out of 10 i'd say a good solid eight okay solid eight uh, hello quick man by the way hello uh, if there's anyone i've not said hello to in chat please let me know uh, moonbeard is also saying a seven Quick money saying 6.5. Uh, Dave, what say you? I'm going to try 7.5. 7.5. Okay. All right. Well, this is your last chance, folks. This is Throne and Liberty, which came out last Tuesday. Uh, it's free to play on PS5, Xbox Series X and S and PC. And this got a perfectly acceptable 7 out of 10. <laughs> so... Well done, J.O. You got this right. <laughs> well done. Uh, get a shout out for our guest tonight. Um, also, Dave. Dave managed to sneak in and get his seven in. That is not a joke. He managed to sneak <laughs> that in before we announced it. Well done, Dave. So, 
He said, you didn't say hello to me, ignoring me again. No, I'm actually bigging you up there. You got, you got it right. Uh, so, Dan, revise down for the win. Ben's like, yes, I got one. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Ben. Congratulations to everyone, everyone who got it right. And also, obviously, go follow, not only go follow the amazing JL, who's our guest tonight, but go follow all these people that are getting their links in the chat. They spend their time to come and watch this show and support us. So please do give some support back. Could we greatly appreciate it? Because we wouldn't have this show if it wasn't for you guys. So there you go. Um, quick man says, yeah, seven out of 10 almost feels like the default score for a bunch of new MOs that pop up without much fanfare. Agreed. So there you go. There you go. Uh, congratulations, everyone who got that right. Let's move on to something else. Now, I'm going to give you a disclaimer with this one, folks. Um, this next game is very chaotic. If anyone doesn't like flashing images... This trailer has got a lot of them. So if you don't like flashing trailer, look away for the next minute and 10 seconds, okay? But this came out last Wednesday uh, on PS4, 5, PC, Xbox Series, X, S1, and Switch. And this is Kill Night. And no, we're not talking boobies, Ginger Viking, but there you go. I did warn you there was a lot of flashing images in that trailer. But there you go. It's still a bit red, said Ryan. Yes. But some people are liking the look of this. And so I feel this is my kind of thing because I like these top down shooters kind of things. I don't like games like Hades and that. And then there's other ones like Ruiner and stuff. I like stuff like this. Um, there's even that weird sequel to Callista Protocol that's like that that's coming out, which is weird. I, I don't get why they've done that, but I'll probably play that as my kind of thing. Dave, tell us more about this one. Yes, this is a, a fast-paced, uh, you know, top-down isometric shooter. Your, your uh, character, some sort of knight, who got betrayed and you know, booted down to an abyss. What is that? What is stuck down the abyss? Though he does get a chance for redemption. He just gets told, "Just go and kill this, uh, this, this last angel." And this basically involves having to go through various uh, combat arenas. And you can see, like, that they seem to like vary, like size and scale and, and obstacles that are in there but the main thing that's in there <laughs> by the look of it all the time shit loads of enemies just swarming yeah. at you constantly so you've got to be constantly on the move you know making sure you're using the right weapons right skills at the right time so you know, just you know play your way through and move through like i think it's like five different sort of levels of this abyss to uh you know, get to the last angel and take them out i think the sort of main hook for this for most people is going to be you know it depends if you like this sort of fast-paced combat but it's also got like a global leaderboard to it as well. So yeah, I'm trying to rack up the highest score, you know, work away up the, to the higher difficulty levels to yeah, get you know, get more points, get more bragging rights on this leaderboard. So I think it's for for that type of player who likes that sort of type of game. So for what I see, it looks quite nice. Yeah, they've gone for a particular sort of lo-fi sort of art style to it, but it looks quite striking. It's quite you know clean. You can see what's going on, which is the main thing with these, especially with all those enemies coming at you. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. I think it's going to do pretty well for that the crowd that likes this type of game. Mm -hmm. I would sign up for this easy. Uh, JL, <laughs> is this your kind of thing? Absolutely. I mean, one, it's got like the army roguelike elements, you know, drop down mode. And it reminds me of Cocoon, the in your game that I played at Wales yeah. back in April time, but like more gory and stuff and more like red blood hands on. And it, you know, it gives you that full adrenaline within you, like because I'm, I'm assuming by that this game that you got a different zone, different areas you can go around, and you, that you know that equal, equals to different members and stuff, and different weapons, different upgrades and power ups, different enemies and stuff like that. And I feel like it's a pretty cool game. It's you know mm. it's in a league of its own, as I say, and yeah, definitely my kind of game. Yeah, 
Okay, folks. Well, what do you reckon this got? Again, loads of scores coming in. Uh, going to <laughs> Amy says, going to be a boring I don't go to bed. Catch you one soon. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Good night. Take care. See ya. <laughs> Uh, let's have a look at some of the scores. Moonchild says a seven. Quickman says I have to stick with my strong 8.5. Darf says a 7.5. Celtic 7.5. Eight from Ben. Uh, eight from Ryan. Um, 7.5 Moonbeard. Nine from Gozo. Um, any others? Have you? Nine from Jenny. Um, eight from Ems. 8.5 and Quickman. Dank for nine. Oh, some, I just got 8.5, seven. Yeah, some high scores coming in. Um, so Dave Johnson says seven as well, 8.5 for iQuail. Dave, I'll start with you this time. What do you reckon this got? 8.5. 8.5, okay. Uh, Manic says nine Doom guys out of 10 because it was <laughs> uh, JL, what do you reckon this got? 8.5. 8.5. Okay, folks, last chance. Get your scores in. This is Kill Night, uh, which came out last Wednesday uh, on PS4, 5, PC, Xbox Series, X, X, One and switch and i can tell you that this got a whopping nine out of ten on average maybe not the highest scoring game of the night so wow it's like boom have that with your blood and guts so congratulations to everyone that got it right well done manic i know you got that right uh, i think danka got the right because i get it right as well uh, I saw some other noise. Jenny got it right. Well done. Um, oh, God. There's someone else as well. Someone else. Can't remember. I'm sure the mods will sort it out. Thank you. Sorry to Dan, who's doing all the hard work there. But well done. Half a point off again, says Quick Man. Maybe you'll get it well. We've still got four more games to go, so don't worry. Four more games to go. Um, but let's talk some more gaming news. Now, we've talked about PlayStation, so let's jump onto Xbox. folks. And this is an interesting one, because Xbox have stated that they are basically putting um, a uh, investigation together, not like a, a legal investigation, but like investigation to see why game devs are giving Sony preferential treatment compared to Xbox or Microsoft. So what they're saying is that a lot of game devs are building games in mind and want to push for PlayStation more than Xbox. Um, and they want to find out how they can be a bit more, user-friendly so that people want to make games for xbox and playstation now i thought this was a bit of a weird thing because i'll be honest a lot of the games that come out day one on game pass are very indie focused and they don't hit playstation till a later date but obviously um i'm going to bring that up actually because just yes, because working with microsoft is a pain in the ass <laughs> actually there's evidence of this whereas sony does seem to be getting like the bigger titles so i think that's why microsoft want to get like they're not getting all the bigger titles but what's interesting is there have been some games that have proved that Microsoft are not that easy to um, basically work with. Um, so first thing, great example, talking about the DLC later on tonight, Diablo 4. That got delayed on Xbox because they had to make technically two different versions for the Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S because the S could not deal with the co-op split screen mode. So that makes means you've got to do twice as much work if you want to put it on Xbox platform because you're not actually just making it for one console, you're making it for two. Whereas if you do it on a PS5, you do it for a PS5. Also, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, there was a game uh, called Entroia, which was a very sort of Dark Souls Italian game. They had big issues. And when we the game went for review on the show, it was due to come out on Xbox, but it got delayed by a couple of weeks because Xbox just literally dropped the ball and didn't get the game out on their platform, in their store. And Entroia quite openly slagged them off for this and said that they they would go to PlayStation. Um, so it's interesting that they want to go, oh, I wonder why people are going to PlayStation. We want to do an investigation. I think there's already evidence why. What do you guys say? And chat, let me know what you think as well. Yeah, as you mentioned that, you know, you, you've got to bear in mind the uh, the Series S just being that little bit underpowered. I think especially it's like the, uh, the lower amount of RAM in it that causes a lot of trouble for some mm -hmm. of Depend Depends on what they're putting into it. As you mentioned, like about like Baldur's Gate 3 with their split screen mode, they, they haven't put that in the S version. I, I think they were still planning to. 
but I don't believe they have so far. But at least Microsoft let them, you know, off with having to do the, the whole feature parity with the console, so they could at least, uh, you know, bring it out with that missing from the Series S. I mean, one thing that probably didn't help. I mean, Microsoft were doing well at the end of the Xbox 360 generation, but they completely mm. dropped the ball with the Xbox yeah, One, didn't they? A lot of people went mm. over to you know, PlayStation 4 at that point, and now we've got all the backwards compatibility stuff. You know, all the digital purchases that you can do. Mm. You know, probably everyone who you know, with the PS4, got a good collection of physical games on there, good collection of digital games on there. You want to keep those with you now, don't you? So yeah. if you had, had a lot on PS4, you'd just go straight to PS5. You wouldn't even look at the Xbox. Mm -hmm. You might consider it as a secondary console, perhaps, if you wanted, like, Game Pass. But for most, I probably wouldn't bother. And also at a time as well, when probably a lot of people were buying, like, PlayStation, it was, like, before we had, like, the crossplay, which, um, yeah. you know, got forced in with Fortnite, really. Mm. That's the only reason we got crossplay because you know that game was so popular, it kind of forced them all to uh, to do it. Mm. But again, before that, people would have been buying the console that their friends had. And if the friends had PlayStation and played together, they'd play on that one. Plus, it's yeah. always had you know the pretty cool brand. You know, PlayStation's always been a, a, a cool brand. You know, it's well known by everyone. You know, it's been around mm. longer than Xbox. So you got all those factors why it's got more of an install base. And the problem yeah. Microsoft have got is you know Xbox has got a smaller install base, so. If people are going to spend them, developers are going to spend the money to make a game for that console, they kind of need to know that it's going to make the money back. Yeah. Because these things aren't getting any mm -hmm. cheaper to make, unfortunately. It, if they can't see a way to get the return, well, why would you bother making it? Yes. Yeah. With, you know, PlayStation or PC, where you could get the return. It's also been very clear that obviously Xbox then do also push for people to get their day one games out onto Game Pass, which, as we've talked about quite a few months ago on the show, is not such a good deal for game devs. But sometimes, if they're not going to get that push, Game Pass does help. But financially, it's not great. But it does get the game noticed better. It's a funny thing. JL, any thoughts on this from you? I mean, my like, I'm a game. I'm not Xbox game, a PC gamer. But the, my issue about Xbox is this: they've got all these studios and stuff, and they're just trying to do con, uh, a partnership with all these studios first. But I feel they're, they're pouring out all these amount of new upcoming titles, but not own, not like publishing it off. They're just like you know re-releasing them, you know, from day one or where it's delayed, mm -hmm. and not actually you know they're kind of like not really doing the best you know quality was what the community actually deserves, and that's why especially mm -hmm. if all these companies are reaching up to the Xbox, oh hey look you know you can do X Y and Z, and then you see you know uh, PlayStation they're like notorious for making the well polished games. I feel Xbox, they just pour out so many games without actually realising, hey, look, we need to slow down a bit, focus on the games that we've got coming they got, rather than pour out all these other games that are, you know, ready to release, but like unfinished and stuff. And that's why I feel that's kind of deteriorated the situation where people, they want to go towards Xbox, and they was like, oh, hey, PlayStation, we can do you a better deal, and then go over to them. Mm. Quick man just said, remember when I Fire Rush came out out of nowhere, got critical claim, made great money, set the awards table with the big boys. Everyone went, want more games like this, Microsoft? And the response was to throw the development team out. I know. I agree with JL. Microsoft is very cloud minded. Put it out quickly, then cloud update them. Is it okay for Microsoft Office? <laughs> Not good for games. <laughs> I agree. I totally agree. And also, Fury said, Sony have an easy path of updates, I hear, unlike Microsoft verification, plus Sony likely give them a little bigger slice of the profit pie too. Money talks, especially in this climate. I agree. So we will see. We will see. Um, it's 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 a funny time. I, I, I Especially for the dev, it must be very difficult. I know we've got Ben in the chat, and we've got other devs in chat. It just, it just yeah. Don't, don't make it difficult. If you've got a game and you want to put it on the platform, don't make it difficult. Just do that. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit seriously for a few minutes. There's two things I want to talk about. First is obviously something that some of you already know about is the fact that we are all throughout October. Uh, apart from when we're doing this talk show, I am doing horror streams. Uh, we've got loads of stuff coming up. We're going to be playing Madison. We're going to be playing more Poppy Playtime, which scares the crap out of me. We've got Dead by Daylight on Saturday. We've got Silent Hill 2, which we'll be talking about in a bit. And we're raising money for an amazing centre. We raised money for them at Timeless Gaming Convention. We wanted to raise some more money. We're already well ahead of our target. We're, we're trying to hit like £25 every, every stream, and we're well over 100 quid already. Um, so if you don't know what everyone can is, here is a little trailer to tell you about the charity and why we would really appreciate your donation. Let's have a look at this. 
Here at Everyone Can, we provide free gaming sessions for groups of disabled children and disabled adults. Every week, we get up to 25 gamers coming to the centre to play together and have fun. We ensure that everyone can game, so if we have a physically disabled child or adult that can't use a regular gaming controller, we can set them up using assistive technology. We usually try and get a gamer to come in for a one-to-one -one assessment first, so we can set them up with the correct equipment, and then as soon as they come in, we know exactly what they need and we can get them gaming alongside others. For children or adults that don't need assistive technology and maybe have a neurodiverse disability such as autism, Asperger's or a learning disability, it's about getting them socialising, about getting them gaining confidence, making friends and just having fun. At Everyone Can we've built a really safe, comfortable space where everyone can come and do what they love and game together. Our gaming sessions are always free for disabled children and disabled adults, but that means we need your help. You can help fund our gaming sessions through donations. On our website, you can donate to us at everyonecan.org.uk. You can get involved with our annual fundraiser, Game Together, or you can organise your own fundraiser at work, at home, a bake sale, a movie night, whatever you can think of. Businesses can also help our charity by organising an office fundraiser or if you select the charity of the year, it'd be amazing if you consider everyone can. We also look for sponsorship throughout the year for our annual fundraiser, as well as special gaming sessions we do for children throughout the year and we need sponsorship to help support those events. There's lots of ways you can get involved. There you go, that is the amazing Everyone Can, a centre based in Manchester. Uh, we've raised uh, we raised over £700 last year, not just at Timeless, but on streams. And we want to do the same again for them. Uh, Jules and the team at Everyone Can do a fantastic job. And they bring families and kids and everyone together to just give them a great time. So we've already raised over 100 quid in four streams. We've got until the end of the month, but I'd love to raise another 25 quid tonight. If people want to feel like donate, there is a donate button. Um, on my Twitch channel now that has appeared specifically for everyone can, that money goes directly to them. It does not go to me. Please use that and you can donate a pound or five pound or whatever you can afford. And it'd be greatly appreciated. If you want more information, exclamation, everyone in the chat. Um, it's such a great, great place. Um, Queeky says, oh, I'm new here. Saw your channel on the recommended page. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, Queeky, we know you. Everyone can is such amazing. It's, it's definitely. It's so, so good. It is so, so good. Um, so please donate. We greatly appreciate it. And um, I can't always see because obviously where I am tonight, I don't have the alerts going off. So if anyone does donate, mods, please do let me know so I can thank the people uh, in person. Um, now, I'm going to take Dave and JL off the screen just for a couple of minutes, gents. So if you don't mind, uh, because there's yeah. something else we really want to talk about that's quite important. Um, so I'm going to put up a picture of um, a dear friend of ours and a friend of the community uh, because uh, I just want to talk about this um, very for a few minutes. Um, so hopefully this, you can see this and if I move myself out of here, um, this gentleman here, you may recognize um, dear friend of ours and obviously best friend of um, Jesse, uh, Mr. Paul Newton. Um, Paul, um, you may know from um oh there's an advert apparently there's an advert i will wait that's so annoying okay i'm gonna wait i'm gonna wait i'll wait Tell me when they're over and then I'll, uh, that's just sod's law that there's ads. I can't tell when the ads are on. It's annoying because I'm using the mobile app. <laughs> there you go. Oh wait, hopefully it's not three minutes because I'll be sitting here for three minutes. I'm on mobile, so I can't see it either. Oh, it's annoying when that happens. 
Adverts over. I'm on mobile too. Ad just ended for me. Don't it's the same for everyone. Let me know that you're all back. Timer says it's done on my screen. Thank you, everyone. Sorry about that. I, I couldn't see the ads were going to start. So let me start from the beginning. This gentleman here, uh, you may know as uh, Paul Newton from Newton's Nuggets, obviously um, partnering crime with Big Jesse, who's in the chat right now. Um, also known in chat for as Paul Newton Magic, um, a wonderful friend of ours and just a great human being. Um, he was on probably our second ever guest on Tuesday Night Gaming Chat when we started this back nearly four years ago. He was our second ever guest. And when we used to do CFE streams, uh, featured and a lot of the CFE streams as we were just basically blowing things up and fishing. Um, yesterday, Paul passed away. And we've known for some time that he had uh, cancer. And um, unfortunately, that cancer was very quick. And we thought he might have a number of years to live. Um, but unfortunately, it was a case that he literally had um, a couple of months. Um, some of you may have last seen him. He was in this very chat in this channel two weeks ago. Um, he's a fantastic guy. He was a dear friend. And I just want to do a minute silence. I'm going to take this, this picture off. I'm going to put another picture on screen and I'm going to do a minute silence. I'm going to disappear off screen, but I would just like all of you to either pop your messages in like you're doing now, or just fill the chat with hearts. Um, I'm also going to stay, please do not hound Jesse and the family with messages because they are getting hounded with stuff. Give them a bit of time, give them a bit of space. Please do send messages further down the line. Um, I'm sure Jesse will will put announcement in the Discord of how if you want to leave a message officially, we can do this um, because I know something's been set up. So we'll, we'll get that um, sorted out tomorrow. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring up another picture uh, and I'm going to come off st uh, stream and um, we're going to give it a minute silence. So um, I'm just going to do this. So bear with us for a second. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Greatly appreciate it. Um, Ryan, also, thank you so much for that £14 donation to everyone who can. That's really, 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 really appreciated. Um, thank you to everyone for the messages and the love. Um, I'll speak to Jesse, and um, we will put something in the Discord tomorrow evening. And if you want to leave messages for the family, there's a correct way of doing it. So we will get that sorted out. Uh, Jesse, you're... Very, very welcome. And I know this is a really tough time for you, mate, because he was your best mate. So, um, yeah. Okay. Um, we're going to move on. 
Paul always used to love laughter and fun and games and things that were chaotic. Um, Ellie, thank you so much for the five pound donation to everyone who can as well. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. Paul used to love things that were chaotic and crazy. And we're going to move on to our next game. And I can't think of anything perfect, <laughs> more perfect to play for the next for the next game. Um, it's, oh, we're still going games, Guru. We haven't finished. We haven't finished. So here's our next game. It came out last Friday. This is SpongeBob SquarePants, the Patrick Star game, uh, which came out last Friday on PS4, 5, Xbox Series X and S1, PC and Switch. Let's have a look at this and let's get some laughter going. Oh, our beloved pink sea star is sleeping like a baby. I wonder what he's dreaming about. Good work, Patrick, me lad. Wow, you're a natural. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You got this. Get so good. Patrick, clear it out. Yeehaw! Awesome job. You did it, Patrick. Perfect. Take your sand dollars and get lost. I'm so good at this. I'm a star. You call that art. There you go, folks. That is the new uh, SpongeBob SquarePants game, the Patrick Star game, which in some ways looks a bit like Goat Simulator because you're just basically booting people up the arse <laughs> so, in some respects. Um, Dave, tell us more about this game, please. Yeah, I, I kind of sounds uh, kind of pretty much right because, yeah, it, it's not really you know, much of a story to this game from what I've been mm. reading about it. It's just a collection of like you know, mini games in like a little open world bikini bottom that you can just go around yeah. as a, as Patrick and you mess around, get given mini games by other characters you'll recognise from the show, and just have a bit of fun with the games. I don't think there's really much more to it than that. So, you know, it's, it's definitely one for the fans, the ones who like this particular character. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, for those, for those people, yeah, you'll probably, uh, yeah, yeah, have some fun fun with it. Yeah. Um, I know this is being showcased at EGX, mm -hmm. so I will give this a try. Um, yeah, why not, mate? Give it a go. I'll give it a go. Um, it's one of the things on the Bandai Namco um, area, I believe. So I'm quite up for this. JL, have you ever played any of the other SpongeBob games? Would you give this platform a many, go? Many a time I've played SpongeBob games in the past. Uh, you know, it's, it's the part of what my childhood was growing up from. I used to play on the PS2, PS3, whichever. And a particular streamer friend of mine, Beyond Belief, he loves his SpongeBob stuff, so he'll probably play that when it comes out or when he gets around to playing yeah. it. Um, but other than that, yeah, I feel it's a really awesome game, open world, you know, colourful, vibrant. It's got, you know, Patrick in, one of the main characters in it. And I feel like, you know, uh, friends, old and new and stuff, or, you know, whichever age they're real, actually will enjoy it, you know. Yeah. I, th I think this would be good fun. I, I like the other two. Was it Battle for Bikini Bottom? And there was another one, uh, the rehydrate, that was the rehydrate one they'd done. And then I, I thought they are good fun. It's mm. harmless fun. Not as good as Astro Bot, but still, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it, it's good. Um, kind of Tekken booths right next to a SpongeBob. They are, the te they are. They've got a Tekken 8 booth and it's going to be next to the SpongeBob. But that is not a joke. I don't know why Tekken 8 is at EGX. Oh, yes, I do. Because it was the only show that Tekken 8 wasn't at last year. That's why, because it was Insomnia, WASD, and numerous others, and it wasn't it. Anyway, let's not go down. I've already hacked them off. Nothing is as good as Astro Bot. True. Um, so get your uh, scores in, folks. What do you reckon this got? Darth reckons this has got an eight. 
Uh, Gozo says a 6.5. Ben says a 7. Uh, Moonchild says 8.5. 6.5 maybe from Quickman. Uh, Moonbeard says a 7. Um, also, again, Ellie, don't worry. It's only a fiver for the charity. I, I saw that comment earlier. Don't worry. I appreciate it. A fiver is a fiver. It will go a long way. Trust me. Uh, it helps. Um, Flame says seven. Guildfly, 8.5. Dave Johnson, seven. Uh, eight from uh, Chaotic Neutral. Um, Astro Bot is super addictive. I love it. M says eight. Uh, Ginger Viking, 7.5. Queaky, 7.5. Is there for tournaments? Uh, same way, Street, five. five. Uh, yes. There is some tournaments. I bet you there's second eight tournaments, but that's all I know so far. Um, Games Guru says eight. Jenny Sparkle says 8.5. Ryan says 6.5. Dave, I'll start with you on this one. What do you reckon this has got? Let's try a seven. Seven. Okay. And JL? Uh, 7.5. 7.5. Okay, folks. Last chance. Last chance. This is SpongeBob SquarePants, the Patrick Star game, uh, which came out last Friday on PS4, 5, Xbox Series, XS1, PC, and Switch. That's a mouthful to say all that. And I can tell you, if there are no more guesses, that this got a fairly okay 6.5 out of 10. It's fun. Again, it's one of those, if you're a fan, you're going to love it. If you're not, you're probably not, because it's not a full-blown platform game like Dave says. It's more collection of mini games. So there you go. There you go. Well done to everyone who got it right. Um Scores go in chat now. So that's a 6.5 for that. And we will move swiftly from comedy straight into horror. Why not? Why not? <laughs> this is a game I absolutely adored when it uh, first came out. Uh, and I, I streamed it probably about two, maybe three years ago now. Um, this is out on PC. For the first time and now on ps5 this also came out last friday and this folks is the until dawn remaster let's have a look at this rated m for mature you need to listen to me you need to go down to the mines i tried what i just where is he? Did he make it? Did he tell you that? He saved my life. How did you end up in the mine? And I watched him die. What's in the mine, Sam? No! Tell me. In this little game you're playing so diligently, who is it that you most dislike? Oh my god! I told you! Everything you do has consequences! <laughs> And you think that these four people are getting what they deserve? Now what gives you the right to play God? Why are you doing this? Maybe you don't like them. As much as you pretend to. I don't know! Stop it! If we can't get along for ten minutes, and maybe we need a little bit of a break, right? PlayStation noise, yes. That's the thing we're going to keep doing now. Every time the Xbox or the Switch or whatever, we stay in chat. There you go. Um, I'm going to put this out there. This is a great game by Supermassive Games. And I still think, even though since they've done four Dark Pictures anthology games, we obviously did the casting of Frank Stone, which we talked about a couple of weeks ago, and The Quarry, I still think this is their best work to date. Um, and... I, does it need a remaster? Again, I don't think so, because it's not that old. So that annoys me in a certain way. But it's got a great cast, and it's a great story, and it was very well done. And, you know, as you say, Peter Stormhair, Rami Malek. Um, oh, my God, I can't even remember all, half the other actors, but loads of people you know from different TVs, from like Heroes and Scream and Superstore and God knows what else, and even Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. They all... If, know who they are you know who they are um so yeah um i love this but the question is is it worth getting the remaster dave let's tell us a little bit more about this it's really a tricky decision isn't it was where to get the remaster i think if you own the original game on like ps4 
I think if you're playing it on a PS5, playing that version of PS5, that runs you know, really well. Still looks really good. Which yeah, is what I, I think, think it can run like up to like pretty close to 60 frames a second on the PS5. Mm. So it runs it runs better than the new one because the new one I think is limited to 30 frames a second. But I've seen some people reporting that it's not particularly consistent. So it's mm. got like a few sort of issues in its presentation. Really, I don't think it's got too many bugs apart from that. Just a few presentation issues. But what they've done with this one is um, they have just re- rebuilt it completely from the ground up in Unreal Engine 5. So oh, okay. it's like, yeah, completely up the detail level. So if you look at any side-by-side comparisons, yeah, you can see the visual difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah Technology has mo- moved along with the generations of consoles, so that can just make it look even better than it did. And it does mm. look good. Other things they've tweaked in this one, they've um, you know, tweaked the, uh, the camera. So previously, yeah. originally, it was like a static camera more or less so you couldn't control mm. it you, just, you know, move the scene the camera was stuck in place this time it's gone for like a third person camera so you know you can move the camera around at will a bit like you can in the new uh silent hill remake and as you did in the uh Re- resident evil remakes for a few years back it's that third person camera it's gone for and they've tweaked a few little bits here and there in the game as well i think the prologue's meant to be a little bit longer you know they've reframed a few of the uh you know the scenes here and there you know, they've done little things like that but it's just it is still generally the same story that you know you might have already played through before, or if you haven't, you know, this is probably the, a good time to come and experience it for the first time. So it'd be the, be, it'd be the best looking version. Hmm. Bit, and also for PC players, first time you'll be able to play it on PC. But since it's got those few little visual issues, presentation issues, it might be worth just waiting for like a, a patch or two to drop just to try and tidy some of that up. Because apart from that, I think it is still meant to be, you know, you know as good as it was story wise. As, as you mentioned, you know, a lot of people do think this is the best. Uh, one of these types of games that Supermassive did, because they've done a number of them now. And I think the problem is if you always try and do like the same type of thing, there's always that diminishing return, isn't there? Sometimes it's always yeah. nice to go back to the original one where it was completely unexpected and yeah, everyone's got the, got the love for it because it was the first one that did this type of a uh, game. Yeah. So, I'd say it's probably a good time to go back to it and have a look at it. Mm. See, obviously I played it on a PS5, but the PS4 version I thought was great. So I wouldn't go and get this. And as people said, this is 60 quid, which I think is quite high. Yeah. If you already played it, I'd wait for a sale. If you've never played it, you might not mind this. See, there's some people in chat who said they've never played it, so that would be great. Um, So I'm just going to say this. Um, It should be the donate button that you're looking for, Jenny, which should be under the screen on my – it should be on the mobile version. People found it on the mobile version as well. But it is a funny little – tiny twitch color button because jenny wants to donate for everyone can um if anyone can help her with that let us know otherwise you might have to jump on a laptop and do it so my apologies for that um that's a twitch thing not us because twitch set that up for us that way i don't have to handle the money it goes all straight to everyone can because i'm terrible with money as you know uh jesse will dm thank you uh, Twitch can be a pain sometimes. Yes, it can. I couldn't see it on the mobile. I had to go to desktop site. Oh, there you go, Ems. I know some people did find it on the mobile. Anyway, there you go. Uh, oh, it's in the About Me section on the mobile version. Thank you, Chaotic. I know someone found it before. So if you go on the mobile version on my page, go to About Me, the donation button should be there. Right, JL, anyway, your thoughts on this, sorry. Yeah, I mean, for someone that's not really played it until game, until dawn game ever and stuff, or ever really owned like a PS5, it seems to be like good. But um, I wish I played the original one before it got touched upon the actual like remastered one because initially I would have been paying all that money for sixty quid for like a remaster polished off game mm-hmm. when you know oh they've got the base game there and stuff for it. So I'll probably just leave it until when a Steam sale goes around and actually play it, you know, yeah. online. Because, like, when they have, like, for example, it's been out, you know, it's out, isn't it? So there's bound to be some bugs and stuff and vice versa, for, you know, even if it's a remastered one of that. And I've not really played Until Dawn, but so far it looks cool, it looks gory, immersive intense, just what you expect in their horror and stuff. Um, but, yeah, I've, for me, that's not really played much horrors. Yeah, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. I, it's a good game. It is, do you know what? You can play it multiple times, get so many different endings as well, which is great. So it's got replay value in it. Um, but we'll see. But it it doesn't feel like it's worth sixty quid. I think I actually I'm not I'm not joking. I think I actually got it when you bought the PS5. There was a selection of PS4 games that were part of a collection. Yeah, I think I and, grabbed it from there. As and well. I haven't played it, of, but I grabbed it. Yeah, it's part of that, and and you get to keep it forever. So I never actually 
paid for it um is one of those things but i know they've taken that collection away now i think last year that collection went it was only around for about two years but i managed to get about eight or ten games out of it but eh, there you go anyway um let's get to see it scores Seven unique storylines out of 10, says Manic. Um, anyone else got any scores? Let me know. Ben says 7.5. Queaky says 8. Um, what else we got? Da, da, da. Seven for the rough upgrade. Everyone says apparently the water looks terrible. Uh, Chaotic says 8. Gilfly says a 7 as well. Queaky says an 8. Ginger Viking says 8.5. Flame says a 7. Um, JL, we'll start with you. What do you reckon this has got? Oh, I'm on the seesaw here, but it's had to be a uh, 8.5. 8.5. Okie dokie. Darth says this was one of the only games I platinum on PS4 when it first came out. It's got to be an 8. Ellie, 7.5. Quickman, 7.5. Moonbeard, 7.5. Dave, what say you? I'm going to try 7.5 as well. Going for a 7.5. Okay. Folks, last chance. We've still got two more games to go, don't forget. Um, this is Until Dawn Remaster, which came out last Friday. Mm. On PC and PS5. Jenny says a seven. There you go. Jenny says a seven. And if there are no more guesses, I can tell you this got a very reasonable 7.5 out of 10. Sweet. Dave, you got your first one right for tonight. <laughs> and having about 0.5 off all bloody night. I know. He's been so right. So well done to everyone that said 7.5. Ellie, congratulations. Uh, let's see who else has got them. Um, God, oh, blimey. Moonbeard, well done. Congratulations. Uh, I don't see if there's anyone else. I'm trying to s scoot around. Well done to everyone that got it right. Now, obviously, for those who don't watch the show regularly, they don't know that Dave is not a streamer. Therefore, we can't do a normal uh, shout out for Dave. You can do exclamation Dave in chat and it will do a, um, I'll bring it up and it will do a, a Dave like that. Um, but also we have to find a different way. Now, this week is more of an exception more than anything because we can't do the spinning in the chair. I can't do the walking on. So um, should we do the one I talked about earlier? I think. Yeah. We'll go, for go for it. Move the chair out of the way. It. Right. Now I can't shout. Right, are you ready? Do that. Ready? Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> nice one, Dave. Very nice. Ah, sweet. Hey, you got to make use of what you're working with, haven't you? So you oh, go. indeed. Now do it in slow-mo. <laughs> if he gets it right, I'll try and do it in slow-mo. If he gets the next one right. <laughs> Let's move on to another bit of news. Um, this was an interesting one. So obviously last week, nice one, bro. This quick one. Uh, 7.5, Manic. That was the score, 7.5. That was hell of a view. Yes, I'm glad I'm not wearing shorts. Um Last week, we talk about um, Ubisoft not doing quite as well as they hope this year. It's not necessarily been the greatest of years for them. Um, obviously, X Defiant didn't turn out to be as big a hit as they hoped, even though it's been very well reviewed and well liked. Um, obviously, Star Wars Outlaws didn't seem to get as much love, even though it's a really decent game and has actually massively underperformed in sales. And people don't understand why. Because it's actually pretty good. I, I like it. I like it, but I don't know why it's getting all the hate. Um, and then, obviously, as announced last week or two weeks ago, Assassin's Creed Shadows has been pushed back to February, which also means they have dropped out of a number of shows, such as EGX and um, the Tokyo Game Show. This has led to uh, people talking about that, the fact that because they've not had such a good year, um, their share price this year alone has dropped by 54%. So shares in Ubisoft have dropped by 54%, which is huge. However, at the back end of last week, they shot up by 26%. And that was because there was talks um, from the Jero family, who own a big chunk of Ubisoft, and Tencent, who also own a percentage of Ubisoft. Um, they were stating that they are possibly looking to privately sell portions of Ubisoft um, to basically get the share value back up or basically get some cash injected into the company. Um, and this made the share price actually rock it up. But the question is, is that really what's going to save them? Because I'm not, I'm not being funny. You could chuck a lot of money 
into a company that's had not as big sales as they were expecting. But really, doesn't it come down to the fact that they've just not really put out anything amazing? Now, I'm going to say this. It's, it's funny. Last year, I think they put out a number of good games, but nothing great. We had the crew game, perfectly decent, but it was like a 7 out of 10. We had Assassin's Creed Mirage, 7 out of 10. We had the Avatar game, great, but a 7 out of 10. We did have Prince of Persia early on in the year, which got better reviews, but then obviously Skull and Bones was quite a, an average scoring game, and um, obviously Star Wars Outlaws didn't get great reviews. They seem to be one of these game companies that are consistently not putting out bad games, but not consistently putting out good games. However, they're just kind of being of the road do you think it'd be better for them to concentrate on that rather than trying to pump more money into the company that's my question and also jenny thank you so so much uh, for the 25 pound donation that's already took us way over our target for today uh, i think we're already like two days ahead of our target which is amazing so thank you so much jenny much love dave i'll start with you on this one yeah i think they definitely need to uh Try and control the the budgets they allocate to some of these games. So I, I don't know how, if it's actually true or not, but I've seen a few reports saying that it's, it wasn't Skull and Bones, which was in development for so long, cost some, somewhere around the, the 800 million mark, which is just ridiculous. I mean, someone someone should have written that off years ago <laughs> if it really was that cost, because somebody needs to be somebody, somebody needs to kick in the nuts for spending that much money on that game, which is farcical. But even the other games, like say Star Wars Outlaws, that was probably somewhere like the two, three hundred million. I, I wouldn't yeah. surprise me. The the costs are ridiculously high. And when they get mm -hmm. that high, they, they need to sell a stupid number of the games to you know make the money back. Because I mean, Star Wars sold. I think last we heard it's like it sold over a million units, which sounds like it would be good. Yeah, you know, it sounds pretty, really, sounds really pretty good. But not if the game costs a stupid amount of money to make. Yeah. Plus, they're probably got to give Disney a good cut of that. So to, you know clear their own like development costs they probably need to sell shit loads more than that millions mm -hmm. more it just isn't really shifting it and as i say it doesn't help when you know it get launches and there's issues you know they get reports and it hasn't got the polish that games mm -hmm. really should have day one because it's not just even so so many co companies are in the habit of just releasing a the game then patching it afterwards to try and fix it up so it's a bit shitty really because they want you to buy these things day one or even spend the extra money to like play early access like three days early but most of the time you're playing the worst version of the game yeah you're spending the most money mm. you're playing the worst version of the game which ain't a good look especially when like say star wars out was on ps5 the number of people who had like a, a save bug because like a progress issue in the game yes they had to like you know restart it that ain't a good look it generates negative word of mouth ahead of time because these are the early access customers mm. so the people waiting for like the proper release you know, it might think, oh, fuck that, I'll cancel my pre-order and wait until it's cheap in a sale. <laughs> so they've definitely got a few <laughs> issues. So I could do just cutting these budgets down somewhat, you know, cutting down the development time as well, because it's taking far too long to get some of these things out. Maybe diversifying a bit more, because they, they just seem to be known, really, for just chucking out all these open worlds over and over and over again. And they're all <laughs> pretty similar to a degree. So you kind of get a bit bored of them. I mean, it was nice to see that Prince of Persia, Metroidvania, come out earlier in the year. Because at least that was something different for me. It was something that. unexpected. I really loved you know, it. it was they could perhaps do, yeah. you know, do, doing some more sort of stuff, you know, kind of like that, you know, smaller budget, they can get turned around a bit quicker, that's you know, yeah. make a better profit mm. on. Uh, perhaps that might be the way for them to, uh, mm. to, to go. Yeah. JL, your thoughts on this? Um, I feel like the advertising factor hasn't really been it's so rare for just them promoting their games and stuff. Like for example, Escavayant, they're like, you know, competition uh their um what was it like the shooter game that came out? There weren't any like, you know, Twitch adverts and stuff or any banners across that town to advertise it or even social media, neither for like mm. Assassin's Creed, but that was up coming and stuff like that, neither Prince of Persia. And I feel like if they're that they, they were just a bit like undercover. There was just like, you know, we've out this game. Oh, we expect you to buy us of kind of deal without actually giving them leeway, putting more updates into the games, you know, what they have currently, rather than putting out all these other like new games, you know, which as it was. And if they're wanting to do that, you know, they're doing more, doing out and then when they're trying to give in, as you know, what Dave said. And yeah, it's just a bit of a rocky situation, to be honest, because Ubisoft is 
we should be a spot on as a footballer to do. But mm. like now they've just like fell down on the deep end, and I just feel like they need to seriously not rely on their shareholders to gain more payment financial yeah. gain, and actually you know set up and say, hey, what's working, what isn't, and actually maybe cut back on what's happening. Like for example, that Assassin's Creed game got pulled out of a you know EGX and Tokyo Game Show, yeah. right? Just because they saw that um, ghost game and stuff, and uh, that will not only generate more money, put them in even more debt because of it. So like. Why are they making all these games and stuff when they should actually, you know, tinker about their current games and stuff? And you know, yeah, I do you know the other thing that got me was like obviously Dave said about it took like I mean, S Skull and Bone should have come out in 2018, and it's come yeah. out in 2024, and it's cost that amount of much money, and then it was so such a, a, a mediocre release, and then obviously Fury mentioned the Sands of Time remake that they announced, but that's been rumored for ages, and you're thinking. Well, how long has this been going on? How, how long is that? Now, that's supposed to be coming out, is it next year or 2026, Dave? One of the two. We've not even seen any footage of it. But And you're just kind of going, they're just chucking money at stuff that's probably going to end up being just so mediocre. Well, I, the Sands of Time remake it could turn out to be really great, but yeah. it might not sell as much as they really want it to. Yeah. Because, you know, because, you know they spent this amount of time getting it made, yeah, they're probably not going to make that money back. It was a good game originally, but I don't know if the audience is there for the remake. Might not be. Hmm. Yeah, no Ubisoft game with Final Just Grand My Open World has ever made me feel like I was expected to tell a quite a Yakuza game that we used the same few city blocks as it's well. Ubisoft just feel completely uninspired. There you go. There you go. Anyway, we will talk more Ubisoft as we always do sometime later. <laughs> Definitely. Hmm. On a future show. There you go. It feels like a company is phase of chucking everything and the kitchen sink at the wall and hoping it sticks. I, it feels <laughs> that way. I do love them. I, 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 there's a lot of stuff that I very much enjoy playing of theirs. But I just feel they are just stuck on that sort of, they're plateauing. Oh, That's what they're like. they, they are quite yeah. boring. I can't say I ever find their games that exciting when they get an yeah. Yeah. They're more like trying to create water, you know, to say the least, just pouring out ideas and stuff like that, and they're just going just like flat. I just says, Yeah. There you go. The most, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Is that, do you know what? I am enjoying Star Wars Outlaws. Is it going to be in my top 10 games of the year? Probably not, because it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll put a lot of hours into it, and I'll probably walk away from going, you know, that was all right. And that's it. Gone. It's mad, isn't it? Uni bland, says Moonbeard. There you go. <laughs> Let's move on to our final two games that hopefully aren't bland. Um, like Dave as a co-host, he's fine. Oof. Oof. <laughs> Those be fighting words. <laughs> for all that oh, they issue, they one of the few have nailed a winner at Life System for the game. Rainbow Six Siege coming on Tinder. No, see that? That Rainbow Six Siege, amazing game. Can't, can't not that. So they do, they do, yeah, but. You know, having the one win every 10 years is probably not what they want. It's not going to be enough. No, it's definitely not going to be enough. Let's move on to our next game. Ellie was talking about this earlier. She got a little bit, uh, had a bit of a rant on her stream last night when it was supposed to drop at 12 o'clock and it got delayed. This is midnight. Uh, we are talking about the brand new Diablo 4 DLC, Vessel of Hatred, which came out today but not at the time it was supposed to, um, on PS4, 5, Xbox Series, X, S1 and PC. Let's have a look at the trailer. I saw my corpse. And from my mouth grow hatred. I'm looking for my friend, Nayrell. Somewhere out there. The heretic Nairel has fled holy judgment. Where is the girl? Marius' death cracked the foundation of our faith. Four of our actions tore those cracks asunder. Help is needed, so help is offered. What's your alibi? What's your alibi? Child of my child, I will give you 
there you go folks that is the diablo for vessel of hatred dlc um chaotic now diablo is where my name alexa 205 comes from it's my og game tag love diablo 2 3 was a miss and then this one some words for two and three my daughter is also called lilith there you go uh 10 from me i'm going uh, with my nine as a guess uh dave says an eight 8.5 vessel war cats out of 10 guilford was like this is sweet um now, Starfield DLC, £30. This is an ultimate edition of DLC of 75 quid. How? Uh, yeah, I know. I'm a bit like, wow. Uh, Fleabag says a 9 out of 10. Uh, Quickman says a completely safe guess at 7.5. Uh, Blizzard is the answer there. Uh, Dank says 8.5. Blizzard, that's how. Uh, Dave, tell us more about this DLC. Yes, this D DLC, it's uh, continuing the, uh, the story campaign from the main game. Carried on like straight after that. But it gives you a new region to go and explore, a new jungle region um, called Nahantu. You're, you're going off in this region to try and find a character called uh, Nairil, who disappeared at the end of the uh, the main campaign in the base game. So you need to find her, then try and stop this uh, big bad that's still around. But what they've also added in this, though, is you saw a few things in the trailer. There's some new mercenaries that they're adding in, so you can recruit these guys mm -hmm. to help you out during um, the gameplay. And they can, you know, they'll fight alongside you, but they will also level up as well. Yeah, they, their abilities will improve, they'll be able to help you out even more. So it's got something extra there. Probably, probably quite useful if you just played on your own solo. You need some help, because sometimes playing these solo, you could just get completely mobbed by all the enemies. So it, like, this is the sort of game that I prefer playing co-op. I did play through Diablo 4 in co-op, but it's quite a, quite a fun experience playing it that way. Um, so uh, I, may, I might consider getting the, the DLC at some point, but not what, I, not what I'm rushing to, to, to grab at the minute. The one thing that does sound quite cool that I've added in for the end game content is um, there's a new co op PVE mode called the Dark Citadel. So that okay. looks like a, you know, a pretty cool mode. Once you finish the main campaign off, you, know, you can still carry on in this. Looks like there's you know, multiple levels just to go through in the dungeon. You know, Loads of different rewards to try and uh, collect, and get lo loads of uh, new loot. Because you know, in this sort of game, it's all about the loot. You go mm. in it, you want to get the best stuff. Yeah, of course. Yeah, put all the good stuff on it, make it the best it possibly can be, so you can just mash those demons to just complete mm. Yeah. A um, couple of the scores we got, Gilfly saying 8, M's 8.5. Um, and he said, yeah, bad when the DLC costs more than the base game. Yeah, that's boring. 8.5, most likely the storyline is always good, can't deny that. Gozo says an 8.5. Uh, Ryan says an 8. Uh, Gilfly says, I think I'm going to get it next month when I can afford it. Uh, Fleabag says, I'll pass, judge Ooh, it comes. I'll pass judgment on the cost until I play through the whole DLC storyline. Absolutely fine. You can let us know what you think of it at a later date. JL, have you played Diablo 4? Are you going to be getting this DLC? I've never played Diablo 4 or any of the Diablo games ever. So uh, I'm kind of a bit of like a noob when it comes to these. But um, so far, I know a few of my friends have been played it. And it looks be quite grindy. As a different class, you can go around, different um, allies and stuff can go down and what different quests and stuff, but it's not really my kind of game. But it seems to be really cool. Um, yeah, there's lots of activities seems to be going on in that uh, trailer. I've seen a lot going on about it. Not really seen much gameplay and stuff, but because um, I've not really played it. But mm. to be honest, like, you know, it seems to be good. Yeah. Yeah. I never jumped into this last year, and I probably won't. And that's nothing against the game. I have played other Diablo games, and I like it, but it's one of those that I just missed the boat on it can't see me ever getting onto it because i just get chucked so many different games it's just mm. but I guess if i had i'd probably jump straight into this i could see me doing that that's all i'm gonna say so folks um get your scores in now uh this is your last chance uh, this is diablo 4 first dlc vessel of hatred which came out today on the ps4 5 xbox series xs1 and pc dave what say you on this one mm, i'll try an 8.5 Okay, JL. 8.5. 8.5 as well. Okay. Yeah, 8 uh, Quick Man says, uh, yeah, 8.5. So many game, no many time. Exactly. <laughs> Kartik says 8.5. Uh, if you got Fully Bag says, if you like the main story, you'll love the DLC. Flame says 7. Moonbeard says, the nerds will love it. 8 out of 10. And a 9 from Ellie. So, folks, I can tell you. That this got a rather excellent 8.5 out of 10. Mm -hmm. Nice. Good. Oh, good. There you go. So, Dave, I've got to do a slow motion dive on the bed now, am I? 
Yeah, that's it, mate. Don't think see how slow you can go. We're not watch now. <laughs> we'll see what we can do. We'll see. And well done, JL, for getting it right as well. Go follow all the people that got it right. Well done to everyone. Let's see if we do this. So. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> Uh, was that all right? Very nice. Thank you. I didn't think I could do slow motion. <laughs> uh, there you go. Well done. 8.5. Well done, everyone. M says like a pro, thanks. <laughs> I hope people are tuning in right now. They probably think it's a moon landing. 8.5 for effort. Thank you. Let's do our final game of tonight and a game that I will be playing a week on Saturday. Can't wait for it. Um, this came out today on PS5 and PC. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is a game that does deserve a remake, as far as I'm concerned. This is Silent Hill 2. I got a letter. The name on the envelope said Mary. My wife's name. It's ridiculous. Mary died of that damn disease three years ago. So then why am I looking for her? You loved her, didn't you? the same I'm not like you are you afraid run I just want to get my Mary back you're Mary. Your own little Mary. It doesn't matter if you're smart, dumb, ugly, pretty. It's all the same once you're dead. And a corpse can't laugh. Stay with me. Don't leave me alone again. You're supposed to take care of me. I know what you are. I know why I needed you. It's all over now. I don't need you anymore. PlayStation noise, yes. Um, so, I've been really hyped for this up until the point when they did the state of play earlier this year and showed gameplay footage of it. And I thought it looked like absolute trash and it really had put me off the game. But then they kind of did another one and went into a bit more of a deep dive. And I was like, oh, no, it's winning me back. So I was like, oh, is it going to be good? Is it not? Are they leaning too heavily on the fact that it's now like trying to do Resident Evil 4 remake style thing? So I was like very divided about this. So I'm not going to say what scores are. I am going to be playing this, as I say, a week on Saturday on stream. 
Um, and I know Dave's been playing this. So, Dave, give your thoughts on this because I'm hoping this is going to be the great game that I'm hoping it's going to be. Yeah, I was much like you, actually. I wasn't too sure about it at one point. But then the closer it got to launch, the more stuff they showed, I thought it was looking better and better. So I was really going mm-hmm. to keep my fingers crossed. They actually like, pull it out of the hat because Blue, Blue, but they made some decent games. Not great, but some of the previous games have just been like, so, okay. So, yeah. so, so everyone was like a little bit worried about the choice. Konami went with, you know, going with Blue, but to make this. But actually, it turned out they've done a really, really good job with it. You know, they've managed to sort of keep the, uh, you know, the atmosphere of the of Silent Hill 2 really, really well. Mm. I mean, the, the fog for one, you go like into the town, that just looks, yeah, absolutely stunning. They've done a fantastic job with that. So that's one of the main things that everyone remembers from the original PS2 game, the fog, which they mostly use because, yeah, there's a bit of a limitation on the, of the hardware at the time. They had to use the fog to uh, you know, be able to sort of put everything else in that they wanted. Yeah. But, you know, they're, they're, just, they're just using it in, this in a really good way. It just, you know, Trash, everything in mystery, just walking through the town. Things, you know, creatures just suddenly appear out of the fog. You know, yeah. Start coming at you, really now the atmosphere. And it's really worked out well. They managed to get the some of the original uh, team back. So they got the uh, you know, guy that did the, the music originally, who yeah. was named in the chat, and the uh, the original art director as well. You know, help them you know, bring some of the all the monsters back up, up to a, you know, a good visual style. Mm. And all the extra details, so they still look really good. And it is just really, really creepy. I'm pl- I've been playing through at the moment about three hours in, and yeah, it's really creepy. But I am enjoying it. I'm currently sort of slowly going through Woodside Apartments at the moment. Got the, got the torch, which really is not bright enough. So I was playing it earlier, and it's it's very, very dark in there. You Ooh. hear all these freaking horrible noises everywhere. It's really unsettled. You're not sure if it's a monster coming at you or just a little, you know, noise from somewhere else. But because you can't see much, because there's no bloody light from the torch. It, it does creep you out quite a bit. So, you know, I think for any like, horror, you know, horror fans, you know, play this in the dark <laughs> with some uh, headphones on, you're in for a very, very creepy time. It's uh, mm. It's been done well. It's a very good remake. Yeah. Um, there's also the fact that we, obviously, yeah, uh, Silent Hill Downpour is still being worked on, by the way, uh, which is the no code one. So that could be good as well. We'll have to see. Um, welcome back, Adam. For anyone who likes horror games, this seems like an absolute must play. Oh, uh, Gilf- Gilfly saying a 9.5. Adam, 9. JL, are you going to be playing this? I will do, for sure. I've never played a Silent Hill game ever, um, but I'm, I'm guessing, you know, I'd rather just dive straight in with the remaster, right? Because I'm not really sure how this first Silent Original uh, 1 and 2 is, but if there's a remaster role, I, I assume I've got to play the originals, but... For my liking, I'm all new to horrors, so it looks really immersive. One, you can kill with like zombies and stuff, and you know, as Dave said, with the whole atmospheric background with a torch, you know, going in blind, not knowing what's the atmosphere and stuff going on. I love those kind of immersive kind of games. Um, yeah, I would definitely give it a try for sure. Um, yeah. I'd definitely pull my pants loads, but honestly, that's that's what a horror game's about, right? So, yeah, for yeah, sure, exactly, exactly, which is why I'm lumbered with playing them all this month. <laughs> Thanks. Um, <laughs> so, hey, we're raising money for charity. I can't complain too much. But yeah, I, I think this is going to be end up being the game that I originally wanted. Like, this is the, the remake I want, and it is a very different. It is a complete remake. It's you know, uh, stop saying atmosphere. It's because we keep Dan keeps thinking about the Ross Abbott song, atmosphere. I love a good party with an atmosphere. That's probably more scary than Silent Hill too. Just saying. So you know. Um, Folks, get your scores in. Uh, Atomic Moon Child says 8.5. Aim says 9. Uh, Viking says 9.5. Adam, 9. Gilfly, 9.5. Uh, let's see what else we got. Any other scores for this? Man, 9 out of 10. Uh, Danker says a 9 for this one. Um, anybody else? Anybody else? Get your scores in. Flame says an 8. Ooh, an unexpected Russ Abbott reference to the week. Yes, there you go. Dave's like, Jesus, make it stop. Um, Flame, eight. Moonbeard, eight. Gozo, nine. Um, Fleabag, 8.5. Uh, Quick Man says, I feel like eight because it's an impossible task to be making what is widely regarded as one of the greatest horror games ever. 8.5 from Dave. Chaotic says 9.5. JL, we'll start with you on our final game of the night. What do you reckon? Because, because it's a fun favourite and everyone's all been like hyping up and stuff about it. I'll, I'm going to have to get, take a gamble saying nine. Go for a nine. Okay, Dave, what say you? Mm, I 
thinking an 8.5 this one. Okay, 8.5. All right. Folks, this is your last chance. This is Silent Hill 2 Remake, which came out today on PlayStation 5 and PC. And if there are no other scores, I can tell you that Dave gets his third one right. It's got an 8.5 out of 10 on average. Well done, Dave. I have no idea what we're going to do for a third thing because we didn't think that far forward. Well, you could go and um, lick the chocolate wall, see if it tastes of chocolate. It does not there taste. There you go. Yeah, I didn't think it would. It does not taste. Worth, chocolate. worth clarifying. <laughs> There's now a big lick mark on the wall. <laughs> I probably got herpes now or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, not things in hotel rooms. Yeah. It's probably best not to think about what could have happened on that wall previous times. <laughs> I might need some bleach to wash my mouth out. <laughs> oh, you should have done an ultraviolet first. No, that would have made it worse. You have to pay the paint job. <laughs> You've now got every 1990s disease. I think I've already got that anyway. Don't worry. <laughs> so I wouldn't worry about that. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, no, the regrets. Oh, no regret. This is a, a job for a straight up vodka. There's a bar downstairs. I can just do that. Did it taste like... It, well, it didn't taste chocolatey, put it that way. There you go. Let's move on to our final bit of news. Two two games. Two games we're going to talk about here. Um, so one that I'm not so excited for, but I know a lot of people will be, and one that I'm very excited for. So uh, the first one is uh, they've never really been able to make a decent Avatar The Last Airbender game. The last one that came out got absolutely crap reviews when it came out uh, last year. But Sabre Interactive have taken the rights along with the people that make the actual cartoons and are making a triple A RPG airbender game. And I said, it's going to be a big, big game. Like you're going to spend hours in this. They're going to give the fans what they really want because they've always had these crap sort of semi platforming games that have never been that good. So We've got Sabre Interactive, who've done, uh, obviously, they most recently did the uh, Space Marine 2, which was a massive success, which came out a couple of weeks ago. Great game. Uh, numerous other games as well. So they're going to be working on that. The other big game, which I'm more excited for, and literally this got announced yesterday, and it was announced by Al Hope, who was the creative original creative director of said game, and he's now going to be the creative director for this, is that there is a sequel of Alien Isolation after 10 years. Last year, uh, yesterday, sorry, was the 10-year anniversary of Alien Isolation. And we've been waiting and waiting and waiting. Wow. And it is finally happening. Now, what's interesting, people say, well, how, why didn't this happen sooner? And it was because, technically, Alien Isolation, when it was brought out by Sega, was not a commercial hit. It took nearly two years for it to recoup its money. But then actually, a bit like one of these success stories, it became such a cult classic over the years that it's actually made it a good profit to get to the point where they can go, we can green light a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So it's absolutely nuts. So um, there you go. We will get more information. That's all they've said. They've said more information's coming. But to celebrate the 10-year anniversary, they're doing it. And a lot of people that worked on the original are going to be working on it as well, which is really, really cool. So I'm excited for that. Um, so there you go. Um, Ellie says, what was the other horror game earlier that got an 8.5? So Silent Hill 2 Remake got the 8.5. Uh, Diablo 4 DLC got 8.5. And the pirate game Rogue Waters got the 8.5. Those were the three 8.5s tonight. Some other games that we didn't have time to talk for tonight, but also out that may interest you. And if you want to find out more of them, I will be putting them in the Discord after this show. Uh, exclamation Discord, if you want to join the Discord, I'll put the trailers and scores. Um, out last Tuesday um, on PS5, Xbox Series X and PC, we had Master Detectives Archive Raincode Plus, which got an 8 out of 10. 
Um, we had a game that got delayed from a couple of months ago. We were due to talk on the show and then it got moved. Uh, came out last Thursday on PC, Xbox Series, XOS and PS5. Parcel Corpse got a s- averaging 6.5 out of 10. Obviously, it's another week. We've got another sports game. On Friday, NHL 25 came to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series XS. Got a 7 out of 10. So if you love your ice hockey games, you'll love that. And yesterday, a game called Phoenix Springs was out on PC and got a 7.5. Oh, you're talking about Until Dawn, Ellie. Until Dawn Remaster. That got a 7.5. So there you go. So those extra four games, the trailers will be in my Discord. You can have a look at them. And that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry we've run a bit late. That is the end of our show. Massive, massive thank you to our amazing guest tonight. First time on the show. JL, how you doing? There you go. Thank you. And look who's here. It's Jules from Everyone Can. Thank you so much, Jules. How are you doing, Jules? We've been raising lots of money. Um, We're we're well ahead of our target. Well, we're on form for our target, mate. Uh, Literally just turned up at the end. I know, mate, but don't worry. We are doing well. Um, We are doing well. We were trying to raise £25 a night, and we're like three days ahead of ourselves. These lovely, lovely people in chat have been donating money left, right, and centre. So we're going to try and see if we get past that 350 goal and smash more money for you. Um, So we're going to do that. So it's going really well. So, again... Big shout out to um, JL. Go follow him. There's his socials. There's his Twitch. Go check out all the links. Um, no, you guys are amazing at the centre because what you do for all those families and kids and everything, it's amazing. So thank you. Thank you to you all your team, Jules. Um, big thank you to my co-host as always, Dave. Always a pleasure. Being, mate. being our fountain of knowledge as always. We will be back with another show on Tuesday. Um Thanks for having me. On, yeah, on Tuesday. Um, Dan, thank you for the 100 bits. Greatly appreciate it. Um, next show. I can't remember who's next week's guest is, so my apologies because I haven't got it in front of me because I've not got me set up. But we'll be back with another Tuesday night game chat next week. Thank you to Dan, who's been doing the modding. Um, thank you to Mr. Johnson, who brought the chaos. He did bring the chaos and basically just insulted everyone. And uh, as we know, community member of the month, we just get rid of the first commit word and replace it with something else. Uh, <laughs> we will be back. Is it? It's Marathon Gaming. Marathon Gaming is our guest next week. A brilliant YouTuber. Love him to bits. He is going to be on the show next week. Uh, and also, again, thank you for all the donations and everything for the charity. And a big, big thank you to all of you that took part in the one minute silence for our dear, dear departed friend, Mr. Paul Newton. Um, we are going to go do a raid. Um, I'm going to press the button. Hopefully this works on the phone. Um, I'm just going to see who's on and see. It does a new thing where it just randomly shows people. Uh, is that working? What we got? 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 Who we got? Or I will take suggestions. Hey, JL, is there anyone you know that you'd want us to raid? Friend, because I'm having a look and I can't see many. Uh I don't really know, to be honest. Um, if anyone's got a recommendation in trap, feel free. Let us know. I'm just trying to see. I'm trying. It's Biowolf. What's Biowolf doing? I've not. Uh, one of my mates is on to survive. Let me just see what Biowolf's doing. We've not seen Biowolf in ages. Let me just see what he's streaming. I'll see if I can. I bet this screws up the stream. All right, let's have a look. What's Biowolf playing? Actually, Biowolf's on. Right. Well, according to my Twitch, I've got completely different people to what's on my recommended list. Um, no, he's just finished. I tell you, we got we have got Soul Strike, who's one of um, the Raw crew uh, over in Wales, uh, voiceover artist, singer, an all round good guy. Let's see if we can raid uh, Soul Strike. See if that do that. Oh, Dar- oh, hang on. Everyone can says Darth Tickle. It's Yord. Oh, I know it's Yord. It's going to Peaceful is on. We raided Peaceful last week. Now go wash your mouth. Um, oh, Darth Tiki, everyone can. Are they raising money for you? Because if they are, then we'll go. He's an ambassador. Oh, look, we'll do that. Ryan, remind me of your mate next time, and we'll we'll do it's Yord, because I know it's Yord. 
He's a he did right. Let me look it up. Let me go. Um, let me get this. Darth T. T. Cal. Darth T. Cal. Darth T. Cal. Here you go. Got him. He's a Scottish streamer as well. That's perfect because I'm in Scotland at the moment. So that, that couldn't be any better if we tried. Hmm. Right. So let me put this in. Darth. I don't know if this is going to work on phone. Sorry, this is normally not this. Here we go. There he is. Start raid. Hopefully that raid's going to start. I have no idea how that's going to work. I don't know if that's going to work. Just so I'm just going to let it raid out, hopefully. I'm going to try and... Uh, yeah, keep my fingers crossed. I'm also going to put his <laughs> channel in the chat. It's timing down, mate. Right, I can't see it, which is really annoying. So I'm going to do that. And then all I'm going to do is um, just hit a button. So from Dave, JL, myself, have a great time. Hopefully we don't get cut off. Um, I am back on Saturday night. Don't forget, it's Dead by Daylight community night on Saturday night, a very rare Saturday night stream. So if you want to come and play Dead by Daylight with us and raise some more money for everyone can, please do. And now let's do that thing where we just wave awkwardly until I press the button. Bye. 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 Ha, ha, ha.